Bespoke Radio for the Masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. You're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Well, 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 here we go. Fade to Black. Bespoke Radio. For the masses. Today is Wednesday, November 2nd. (laughs) 307 days into the new year, 60 days left. I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world. All across the United States, hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near, and Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> yeah. This is Fade to Black. For KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet, I am your oh-so-humble host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? Let's do this. All right. Tonight, Holly Cook is here to discuss semantics and the specific point where chaos turns into harmony and creates a geometric pattern. What instigates that moment of change? We're going to find out tonight. Holly Cook is here. Tomorrow night is another Fader Night with John Rappaport. And his No More Fake Newsroom. You can follow us on Twitter at J Church Radio. At J Church Radio. Simple enough, right? Facebook, YouTube, everything is fade to black. J Church Radio, Jimmy Church Radio. Easy to do. Follow, like, and subscribe. Just go over to our website right now and click on those little, those little things, those little icons. I You can email throughout the show tonight, jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. The sandbox is hashtag F2B. Sandbox is lighting up. And look, obviously, tonight is game seven of the World Series. So what's interesting here is this is a three-hour live broadcast. So by the end of tonight's show, we're going to have a new World Series champion, and it's either going to be the Chicago Cubs, who are currently in the lead five to three, uh, top of the sixth, right? Or, or we're at, yeah, top of the sixth, five to three, and uh, or the Cleveland Indians, and uh, they're both in a drought. I mean, Cleveland, what? I, I I don't know. This isn't a sports broadcast anymore. You know, I don't do that. But uh, so it's either Cleveland or it's going to be Chicago. Chicago hasn't won in forever. So there you go. So it's an exciting World Series. Came down to. Uh, A game seven doesn't get better than that. And so I decided if you are sharing with me tonight and you're here, then I will update you throughout the game. I've got it up right now. Yes. Cubs had it five to one, but now it's five to three. So as it changes throughout the night tonight, I will let you know. Most of you have the game on in the background and I get that. And so I am sure that you will be updating Twitter to uh, just as fast. That'll be interesting to see what's faster, you or uh, ESPN. <laughs> right? Okay, so there you go. Tonight, Holly Cook is here. We're going to have a great conversation. And uh, um, I have no idea, uh, you know, what the ratings are going to be tonight when we're up against a Game 7 of the World Series when it's the Cubs and the Indians. But <laughs> it is... It's uh, it's going to be one of those shows. And, you know, some history is going to get made tonight either way with Holly 
or with the Cubs and the Indians. So let's do this. It's 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 a guarantee. Mm. Ah, hit that coffee, that River Moon coffee. Yes. All right. Tonight, in a few short minutes, Ronnie McMullen is going to be here from Life Change Tea, getthetea.com. And he says he's an Indians fan. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, Roddy McMullen's going to be here and, uh, just go to the banners over at jimmychurchradio.com and click on all of them for all of our sponsors. You have a uh, life change tea, get the tea.com use the promo code Jimmy when you order and you're going to get free shipping either over the phone or online. Very simple river moon coffee, the makers of faded black blend. It's dark. It's complex. It's smoky. Just go to the river moon coffee banner on our site. And use the promo code F2B Blend. F2B Blend, you'll get 15% off of your order. And then, of course, Studio Dome and their Fade or Not special. Their banners are right there at jimmychurchradio.com. And they have the Fade or Not special, which is a stereo Bluetooth system with two SB B2 speakers, ready to go, wireless, high fidelity stereo system for just $129 in a hard shell case. And with that, use the promo code JCRTWS, 60% off the normal price of $399. And you'll also get free shipping. Let's get this show cracking. I got to get Ronnie McMullen in here. Happy birthday to David Schwimmer. Today, he is 50, and he made the cut, everybody. Ah, Cubs just scored 6-3. to three. Cubs, 63, top of the sixth. All right. David Schwimmer is 50. He made the cut because of Madagascar, not because of friends. Let's be clear. All right. Our dead guy's birthday today is Marie Antoinette. 1755 to 1793 was beheaded at the age of 37. French queen from 1774 to 1792 and wife of Louis the 16th, who was executed by guillotine. Her lavish lifestyle was often blamed by the French for their financial crisis, and she was used as a scapegoat for much of France's problems. Let them eat cake. Yeah, there you go. On this day in history, 1947, the spruce goose flies. That's right. And it happened right here in Long Beach, California. The Hughes Flying Boat was the largest aircraft ever built piloted by Howard Hughes on its first and only flight in Long Beach Harbor. Fader fact, together, together, I want you to listen to this, together, the world's top 12 richest people could buy all of Manhattan. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. And if you've ever walked around the streets of Manhattan, you know exactly what I'm talking How is that possible? But it is, and that is a fader fact. Now, I'd like to bring on with us our good friend from Life Change Tea, the one and only Ronnie McMullen. Ronnie, good evening, sir. How you doing, Jimmy? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing great. Are you watching the World Series right now? Right this second, no, but I heard the score, and, and it's uh, it's changing every every minute. <laughs> yeah, well, it's now 6-3. to 6-3, three. to three. it was 5-1, to one, then 5-3. to three. Now it's 6-3, to three Cubs, top of the sixth. Wow. That's a, you know, that's a nail-biter of a game, if you think about it, because it's a game seven. Obviously, there is a game going on. You know, it's not 0-0, you know, in a pitching battle and all of that stuff. We've got home runs, and uh, I guess Fowler just, uh, you know, lead off home run in in the first inning, and uh, here we go. You know, so nail biter, man. You see, this is what's trippy about this. If you're a Cubs fan, sixty three is not a big enough lead, right? <laughs> it's just, it's just not. You know, but you're feeling good. But if you're an, Indi you know, it's at home, and if you're an Indians fan, you guys are in the game, right? Right? It's six to three. And, uh, and here we go, you know, um, if, you know, I'm from Chicago, 
So I'm I'm sitting here going, you know what? This lead's not going to hold. I want to be a Cubs fan, you know, but it, it just it ain't going to happen. It ain't ever going to happen. It's just not. It's never going to happen. They're never going to win a World Series. And here we are, Game Seven. They're up six to three, top of the sixth. Ooh, so you're an yeah. Indians fan. You, did you grow grow up an Indians fan? No, I, I actually I, I became an Indians fan when I uh, I used to actually back in the old days used to drive limousine and so I would always take the pitcher Brooke Jacoby to his uh, his workouts that he did in Tucson. So it was always uh, kind of uh, kind of a cool thing, and you kind of get to know the people and their family and what have you. And next thing you know, you become a fan. And it, 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 you know, <clears throat> this is. This is what's weird. I don't understand why the Cubs, with all of their great teams over the years, just managed to never get there. And I used to just think there was some kind of crazy conspiracy. You know, was it <laughs> was it Mayor Daly? Did he piss somebody off? You know, what's what's going on here? And and I always thought that growing up that there was something behind the scenes that was preventing uh, the, you know, the Cubs from from getting there because they could just never pull it off. And they had a lot of great teams over the years and and just never seemed to quite get there. And, you know, conspiracies in sports, you know, sports is supposed to be an, an honest thing, you know, but then we find out about all of these things that are going on, like with uh, uh, Premier League soccer and, and the Olympics and uh, uh, Formula One racing and, cheating in nascar right and, and deflate gate with the the patriot you know what i mean there is there's stuff sports well, it's kind of disgusting that there's so much corruption you know you look at the politics and obviously that's kind of wild of corruption and you know you, you would hope that it wouldn't leak into our sports but it has so it's oh my god you know it's like what's going on with this world well and and check this out when we t you know there's also the part about drugs and sports right and 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 in in every sport, but if we go back um, into the fifties and sixties before they were testing for drugs, probably every athlete was taking amphetamines, was taking crazy uh, opiates and painkillers, uh, drinking yeah. all night long, you know. And uh, I, I forget who was the pitcher um, that was um, on LSD. Um. Oh man. I oh yeah. I, I, I can't. Yeah, I can't think of him right now at this at this moment. But um, it seemed like all of even now today we look back and we go, ah, that was okay. You know, that was the time. That was the era. But today, uh, there is uh, every <clears throat> doctor in the world that knows what they're doing is helping these athletes <laughs> bend the rules, and now it's a game of cat and mouse trying to you know, trying to catch who is, who is breaking the rules and why can't we just, you know, not e either everybody gets to take all the drugs that they want or come on, let's play fair and, and nobody take anything at all. Nothing, nothing. I think nobody should take it. They shouldn't take anything. I really do. And, you know, because then it's kind of the best of the best. And that, isn't that what we're looking for in sports is those that can outperform. I mean, that, you know, and when you're outperforming because you're drug enhanced, you know, that's, that's cheating. I, I don't know. I guess there's a lot of cheaters. I, I just don't like cheating. I like to see somebody that is playing the game fairly and, and they're, they're a winner. I mean, that's always kind of cool to watch. We wonder sometimes when we look at the conspiracies of sports and there's, uh, I mean, woof, ah, right. It's, it's crazy, but yeah. it's not a coincidence that everybody just got bigger, faster, taller, you know, uh, you know, the points and the, 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 the way that people throw balls or kick balls or, you know, all of this. Yeah. Yeah. Just faster and faster. <laughs> Do you remember, um, uh, the first time the four minute mile was broken, right. And it was, it, it was supposed to be the thing that would never be broken and it's had the crap kicked out of it ever since. Right. And it, yep. it, aspects like that, or the the hundred meter dash, right? Ten seconds in the hundred meters, right? And and that's gotten the crap kicked out of it. You know, it seems like every year, forever since. 
And are we going to get to the point where there's a one second hundred meter dash, right? <laughs> In a right. hundred years from now. Now, is that because of drugs? And is that something that we are okay with as a society because the records are getting broken and these guys are faster and better and, and so forth? Or, or do we just go back and look and go, you know, the reason why all of this is going on is because of drugs. And if they stop that, and now we're back to a 10 second hundred meter, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Back to a yeah. four That's minute exactly. mile. And, and, you know, it gets wild too. Even, uh, you know, I, I kind of sway over to the motocross, uh, dirt bike riding, you know, desert racing, so on and so forth. Right. And, uh, you know, when you look at the guys doing jumps and they're taking their whole motorcycle and they're flipping their motorcycle on a jump, completely doing a loop and coming back down on the backside of the jump. I mean, you know, us guys in the 80s, I mean, that was like taboo, you know, forget that. Oh, know? yeah, you were. You, trip, you, jump, you were you were rocking, but you, none of this, you know, flipping your bike completely and staying on the bike and do, flipping the bike completely over and coming down the backside. I mean, it is like, there's the one I have to wonder, is there drugs going on there? Because you'd have to be on drugs to even try something like that. I mean, I, the, no crazy. doubt, no doubt, Ronnie. And, and let's let's go back to the 70s when Evil Knievel would stand on his seat and pop a wheelie, and we thought he was the greatest daredevil ever. Now, if you saw somebody do that today, you would think that he was dropped on his head as a baby, right? <laughs> you would look yeah, at it like, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, so? You know, and I, I look at Evil Knievel, and I go, now that I look at Evil Knievel, you know, obviously where race bikes have gone forward now, um, and you look at Evil Knievel on his Triumph or on his Harley, and the travel that is on the shocks, you know, to make such a jump over 20 cars, you kind of go, are you insane? I right. mean, you know, the chances <laughs> of you making this is like, it's like taking a go-kart over 20 cars. You know, you're going to die. So it's crazy. It is because me and my brothers, um, when we saw, we saw Evil Knievel jump and we were uh, kids in the early 70s and, yeah. and Evil, you know, popping the wheelie while he was standing on his seat. <laughs> <laughs> and so we go home with our, you know, our, our Schwinn stingrays, right? With the banana seats and yeah, we're out on our street. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're out on our street, you know, standing on the seat, you know, popping the front tire off of the ground. <laughs> and you think about it and we just thought we were just the coolest ever. And I remember uh, the first time I, had, uh, uh, you know, because BMX bikes came into fashion in uh, the early 80s. And, yeah. uh, and they were around in the neighborhood. I was getting a little too old for that. I was a senior in high school and stuff. And, and, uh, but BMX bikes started to come out. So I come out here to California and I go down to Venice beach and which is nuts. Right. And I'm watching this kid on this BMX bike doing these things that were, uh, superhuman, just crazy, you know, bouncing, you know, just doing this stuff. And I'm thinking, you know, back in Indianapolis, uh, uh, we weren't exactly doing this, you know, but the stuff we were doing back in Indy just a week before, right now I'm in Venice beach and I'm watching this insane kid doing these tricks on this BMX bike, uh, for the crowd. And, uh, it, it, it puts everything in perspective, just like, uh, uh, just like evil, you know, popping the wheelie you know, standing on the back seat and, and where things went to today. You know, when you look at Pastrana or some of these guys in, in cars and motorcycles and the things that they're doing, I went down to um, uh, the X Games in uh, downtown L.A. And this was um, this was about five years ago, probably 2010, 2011, 2010. And I'm down there and I see this ramp that is set up that you drop off of and it is taller than uh, the ESPN building, Staples Center, which is next door. So I don't know, you know, 10 stories in the air, some crazy. And you drop, you know, you, you go up with your bike. And I'm watching these kids are in line, right? And they're all little, you know, they're 15-year-old kids. And uh, they're all in line. Uh, they're professionals. But um, to drop off this thing straight down. I wouldn't do it if it was a, a ride in an amusement park and I was strapped in, right? But these guys, 
they could if they went uh, two feet in other di- and they're going to just land on the ground, you know, 10 stories below. And I just thought, how do we get here? And then across the street, Ronnie, was another ramp that you jumped on that was the same height, right? And I was watching these guys practice, and I swear to you, I I swear to you, it seemed like they were 300 feet in the air. Just like some crazy, they were tiny, flying through the air, doing these crazy tricks way, way up in the air. Um, to me, it was taller than the Staples Center. That's how high they were flying. And I just, I just couldn't believe it. Death defying. So death yeah. defying. That's exactly death defying. So uh, what's new over at, uh, at uh, life change tea? Oh, well, you know, it's funny. We were talking about athletes and stuff and, and I don't know if I've ever discussed this, you know, a lot of people, be, because they got stomach aches and all that kind of stuff, they've jumped on the colostrum. And then of course, Chocolate colostrum, and, and by the way, how do you like that chocolate colostrum? Love it, love it. <laughs> so, but one of the things I never, I don't know if I've ever discussed is a lot of athletes out there um, that might be listening. Um, they, when you're working out and you're breaking down your your muscles, you're ripping your muscles so that they grow, so on and so forth. Um, there's 20% growth hormone in colostrum, which means a lot of the athletes use colostrum to build or build body weight and build their muscles back. Um, they heal much better. So when you take colostrum right before you go to bed, your body's going to heal much better, especially after a workout. So just thought that's, you know, not only are you going to heal your stomach because all disease starts in your stomach, but not only are you going to make your stomach feel way better, but for those that are just athletes and maybe they don't have stomach problems, um, you, kind of a cool thing that uh, 20% growth hormones is going to make them kind of feel a lot better and uh, they can do some, uh, definitely healing over the night when they drink it right before they go to bed. I have, uh, as you know, I've been taking the moringa and the olive leaf and the vitamin C drops along with the alley C uh, for the last month. I feel great. Uh, we have a jug of tea in the refrigerator and we do the colostrum, you know, every night. So that's my regimen. But I wanted to ask you about uh, the vitamin C. Um, yeah. How... Uh, how strong, because I've never read the bottle, right? I, I, I never do that. I see the eyedropper. That must be what I'm supposed to do, and that's what I do. But um, how strong, how potent is the vitamin C drops? Well, the drops are, are going to be, the potency depends on how much you put in there. But if you're going to say you're going to do an eyedropper, you can't really OD on vitamin C. I mean, I guess you could if you went crazy and drank a bottle of it or something, but it's, it's really a good thing. And the synergy, too, between vitamin C and some of the other supplements, like if you're taking meringue or whatever, it's a really great synergy and a great carrier so that it goes very well. In fact, if you look at the alley C, it actually has vitamin C in it and bioflavonoids. So that basically will take the alley C or take the allicin through your body quicker and better and you absorb better. So these are uh, wonderful products. The vitamin C... Um, I think the liquid is, is kind of the way to go. It obviously tastes good, as you know, but it also on top of that, it gets into your bloodstream much quicker because it's liquid. Um, you're, you're touching it on your mouth or, or you're, maybe you're putting it in water. It goes right into your bloodstream. So it's not knocking other vitamin Cs, but it's just basically saying it's going to get you now. And, you know, if you're taking Alley C and you're taking uh, vitamin C and meringue and all that, oh my, and the colostrum, I'm just curious to watch how sick you get this winter because when people are sick, I don't think, Jimmy, you're going to be sick. And being in radio, that's a big deal. No, it, it is a big deal. And I've noticed, um, and you can ask Rita about this, a couple of times over the last couple of months, I woke up and I said, you know what? I think I'm getting a cold. But it never happened. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. It, it never happened. And that, um, we all know what it's like the, the, the morning that you wake up and you've got that feeling in the back of your throat, you're not feeling right. You have a little bit of a headache and you're like, okay, here we go. I got two weeks of madness now that I got to put up with. And it never took hold. You know, um, I, I, I have to attribute it to that, you know, to these supplements and, and, and what I have been taking every single day. 
I've uh, come close to blowing out my throat a couple of times, um, uh, you know, where I, I knew and I used to I used to uh, do a lot of public speaking and I was on a lot of airplanes and I uh, uh, would get sore throats and it got to the point where it was nearly chronic. And yep. I was doing a lot of uh, uh, antibiotics and uh, a couple of times, you know, but I, I have not been close to having a sore throat or feeling sick since I have uh, got on the program uh, with Life Change Tea. Well, I'm going to keep you on the alley C. And a lot of people, you know, obviously we have quite a few products when you go to get the tea.com. But a lot of people, you know, obviously we don't have a budget to have every supplement there is. And I understand that top three is the tea because the tea flushes you and takes all the garbage out of you. So that's so, so, so important. And not just, you know, drinking it for one month. I mean, regimen every month drinking the tea. And then the second thing is colostrum for your stomach. It's going to build your immune system, which is your warriors against fighting stuff. Um, and it keeps your stomach intact, so on and so forth. And then the third one would be the Alley C, which is awesome because it's going to fight bacteria and viruses so basically with those three you're flushing toxins out so when you go somewhere you eat the wrong thing it's going to take some of that garbage out you've got the alley c that's fighting the bacteria and the viruses and if you do eat something kind of whoa then you've also got the colostrum that's going to help your stomach and say okay we're going to patch this up because you know you shouldn't have ate this or you shouldn't have breathed this or you shouldn't have i mean even our water is poisoned anymore so it's it, we are under attack as human beings in fact, I saw a shirt. i got to share this. I saw a shirt the other day. It was a shirt with a panda bear, and the panda bear was saying, had a, had a sign up that said, save the humans. <laughs> that's funny. I mean, that's that that, a funny shirt. That, that's funny. Yeah, I, 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 we only do filtered water right here, and uh, that's it. Only filtered water or bottled water. I am so afraid of the water i'm almost you know i i wish i could take a shower in filtered water i would feel better right but i try i try not to let anything leak into my body not you know what i mean i used to love yeah. when, I, when i was a kid you know take a shower spin around put your face on you know and and yep. and, and a mouthful of water and and all of that not no i, I just don't do it yep no, I, I understand water is a big deal. Air is a big deal with the geoengineering and climate control and all that. And it is climate control. It's not climate change. It's climate control. So, and, and I know your listeners know all about that stuff. And, and this is the key is, is um, you know, and I, I, as I use you for the guinea pig, I mean, this is the key is keeping you healthy and keeping you doing what you're supposed to be doing. I think that's really important. Um, I'm behind you 100% in what you do. And I'm... I and, uh, and I'm behind. There's not too many people out there doing what you're doing. Thank I mean, you. Not, not. There's not good ones. You're, you're, you're the Kahuna. You're the big <laughs> Kahuna. You're the man. So I, I, you know, I'm behind you all the way. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Be safe out there. And it's still 63 with your Indians. And we'll see what happens at the end of the night. Until then, it it, might. let's it, hope. Let's hope. <laughs> get all right, the. You take care, buddy. I appreciate it. You got it, Ronnie. Get the tea. Dot com. Get the tea.com. Ronnie McMullen, Life Change Tea. This is Fade to Black. When I come back, Holly Cook, right here. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. Email is Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. I'll be right back with Holly Cook right after this. Listening to Jimmy Church fade to black. Fade to black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. What's up, revolutionaries? It's me, Jimmy Church. Do you have an IRS or state tax issue? Well, I did, and I called national tax experts. 
My problems were fixed, done, fini, and man, I got to tell you, it was a relief. National tax experts are a recognized tax office that services clients in all 50 states. It doesn't matter where you live. Give them a call. I'm telling you, they take the time to understand each and every client's individual financial status as well as their financial goals. And that's exactly what you need, my brother, when you're taking on the evil three letter. So, seriously, give them a call today at 1-877-909-5444. Again, 1-877-909-5444. Or go check out their website, www nattaxexperts.com that's n-a-t-t-a-x e-x-p-e-r-t-s dot com tell them jimmy sent you hi folks in a world of gmo genetically modified organisms that is chemicals processed foods and a healthcare system that's unraveling like a cheap suit it's time to prepare god created herbs and herbs help man our body can heal itself, just sometimes we need assistance. You need some help? Get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. Our mild detox is quite powerful with its unique blend of eight different herbs. And if you're looking for more, our non-GMO supplements will help you with different needs you might have. Health should be a top priority. Take care of your health naturally. Log on to get the tea. Dot com. That's get the tea dot com. Give your body a treat. Let the herbs do their thing naturally. Read all the testimonies on the website. Get the tea dot com. That's get the tea dot com. Sickness and viruses are like intruders, and herbs are like warriors. Let the tea work for you. That's get the tea dot com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Chase Klutzke with Fate Magazine Radio, and you're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA digital broadcast station, where the Fader Knots rock. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This Mass is Kyle Mass, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Holly Cook is right here. She's back with us. And in cymatics, there is a specific point where chaos turns into harmony. And it creates a geometric a geometric pattern. What instigate that moment of change? Can we have that change in our lives? And what to do when we get there? By using the conscious choice of free will... And by looking deep into our own reflection, we can learn to make these choices that keep us in alignment while infusing the grid of unity consciousness with a positive vibration. And that tonight is what we're going to talk about with our good friend, Holly Cook. Holly, welcome back. How are you? I don't know. I think we're here right now. Can, <laughs> can you hear me okay on you, this phone? You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Oh, okay. It, it was so funny because um, uh, the world is is uh, is is definitely in chaos. I like to um, always go back and and look at the ancient Egyptians and how they uh, tried to their their gods were in place to make order out of chaos. Right. And chaos was right. the was the Nile River coming in and and. Uh, at a different time and they never knew and and you know and that that was part of it and it was always um you know the gods were there to straighten out chaos and turn chaos back into order right and but they recognized that specifically and we've gotten away from that over the last few thousand years and and today it's like chaos is the norm. You know, do you ever have a day that's just not out of control these days? Do you ever have a normal day, right? Just a normal day where you go, wow, 
wow, I got through the day today and nothing happened, right? Right. And, and you really have to be cognizant of, of making that happen, it seems like, these days. And that, well, right. I mean, there's so much going on. And lately, I've, I just feel like I'm in this crazy, like information tube. And as soon as I'm supposed to go to sleep, like my eyes are wide open, all these ideas are flowing. It's just everything is moving so fast. And so where do we start? Let's start at ground zero. How do we start to fix this and how do we recognize it? Well, it, it really, you know, so many of us are trying to have these crazy 5D experiences where we want all this contact with the angels, the ETs. We want to jump onto the other side with the veil. But you know what? It re really starts with building the foundation of your emotional being. It, it's really starting by clearing the trauma so you don't get so triggered. And that sounds kind of... It, 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 it kind of sounds like it may not make sense, but if, if I'm running around the day and I'm sourcing from an old traumatic imprint, then so many more things are going to trigger me. My ego is going to digest so much more of what I'm supposed to be hearing in a negative way opposed to being in resonance with my heart and letting things roll off because of something's triggering me. I can kind of push it back with compassion or understanding. And so to me, it's, it's really about being clear and in alignment with yourself and being able to be in alignment with your heart and your head, which is incoherent. And when you're in that, you're almost in like this elevated state of, of consciousness or bliss where everything's just sort of moving around you. And uh, what is somatics? Okay, so it's what got me really interested in this is I met this gentleman actually from Ashland, Oregon, and he's studying cymatics where you put the sand or the water and you allow it to vibrate at a certain frequency, and then it goes from chaos into a geometrical pattern. But is what is what really fascinated me is there's this one point there's this one point when it transitions so you have the water or the sand and it's just jumbling all around all of a sudden it turns inside of itself almost like a torus it turns inside of itself and comes out into this pattern and you have to actually slow down the computer frame to see it that is, it is amazing. I was totally fascinated by that. So what in our life, what's that point where we go within ourselves, come back out and make a new pattern? Interesting. Um, and what uh, the frequency, do you know what that frequency point was? No. And, and so they can do it with different frequencies, you know, the, like Dr. Emoto's work, when you put the word on the water and then you freeze the water drop and it makes the ice crystal. So it's, it's whatever frequency you want to put into the water or the sand to make that pattern. But, but what, is that, what is that point when it turns? What is that point? And I was talking to, to the gentleman, Andrew. He was actually with us that night at the Sopatel. He's a younger guy. Yes, and I remember. He had it on his computer, did you right. see it? Yes, 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 yes. So I talked to him quite extensively, and that's what he's trying to figure out. What is that point? Well, if in it, it it goes out, um, uh, it goes out to the universe. If if we start to look at it in those terms, right? What are these harmonic frequencies where everything aligns up and 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 communicates and makes sense to each other, right? And then all the way to the inside, from out there, all the way to the inside of us, right? And and if we could if we could tie into that and start to figure out what it is that harmonically, 
you know, uh, what those those moments where everything is in line and bliss and and makes sense to to um, to each other, not not to uh, well other beings, but I'm talking about down on the atomic level, right where everything right. lines up. Because when you look at some of this somatic stuff, and I've I've done a lot of it, and I've looked at a lot of it, and different frequencies where you get different patterns and and things line up for different reasons. And it could be the same component. And in this instance, it's sand, but it could be color. It could be a lot of different things. But uh, where the uh, it goes into chaos, but then another pattern is created at a different harmony, right? A different harmonic frequency. And, and there yeah. are lots of them. And it's a fascinating thing to watch. You know, and and colors and how they align too as well. It is uh, it's one of the most fascinating aspects of our lives, and one that there isn't a whole lot of research done in this area. Right, and so you know, I just saw a um, I can't tweet and talk at the same time because I'm still clinging to that blonde archetype, but I just saw this thing flash up on my computer that we're seventy percent water. I don't even know who it was from. Why can't we? infuse that with a love basically. And that's actually what I was going to talk about um, as we proceeded is that we are 70% water. So no matter what is coming at us, it's, it's up to us to either transmute that into love with compassion, or it's up to us to get really angry and really upset and allow that chaos to go through every single cell of our body. Right. It's, it's up to us, though. I mean, in my opinion, yes, everything goes out to the universe. We are all so connected, but we have to make that conscious choice. And it starts right here in the house. And it's about being in control of our actions. But unless we are still sourcing or until we can erase that original imprint of trauma, we will continuously be in chaos. And and we talk about that a lot. And I hear a lot of people talk about that initial trauma that happens. Uh, so how do we how do I how do we identify that trauma? Um, and what is that trauma? Is that trauma uh, uh, something that, uh, you know, that somebody that doesn't know what we're talking about, are they going to assume it's when you were beat up by your big brother when you were five or, it, you know, something simple like that? Or is it something else? What is that initial trauma usually? Okay, so that was a great example because it can be something very simple. I had a gentleman who never felt safe through regression we tracked him back to when his five-year-old sister locked him out of the house when he was three. But because he carried that negative imprint up until his mid-40s of not feeling safe, that imprint evolved into more, you know, it's like age appropriate. So when you're three and you're locked out of the house, that's a big deal. And then as you get bombarded by fear from society, it evolves into bigger fears of feeling unsafe. Now you're going to get mugged at the ATM machine. Now, you know, somebody's going to break into your house. So that fear evolves because your mind has to have the point of trauma catch up to what you can, um, what you can identify it with. So, the point of trauma can come from a childhood or sometimes it comes from past lives. So that's when it gets tricky in the regression. If you want to track the person down to this point of trauma in this third dimensional lifetime. And then from there, at least in terms of my experience, from there, you can drop into the past life and start clearing that trauma that's trickled over here. So you start getting very, um, very convoluted in in the time and space continuum. You just you can drop into past lives, or it could be something in this lifetime that occurred. Now, our certainly our generation, all of us were 
traumatized at birth when we were slapped around by a doctor, right? <laughs> so your entrance into the world is getting <laughs> smacked, right? Um, and so there's that. And then uh, I look back at my life, um, and I, I've got to be very similar to a, a large, you know, a lot of people out there. Where I've had, I've, you know, 50 different things happened to me by the age of five that I remember that were pretty, pretty dang traumatic. And, and I got through it and, uh, I'm not sure which one of those events would be affecting me as an adult. Um, or can some people have those traumatic experiences and come out of it in a positive light and not need to go back and, and try to fix something? Absolutely. And it's funny because it seems like the younger generations are the ones that are able to, to self-correct. I just use Lori McDonald's term, but it seems like the younger generations are the ones that are now self-correcting. They're completely coming through into this plane of existence with so much wisdom and they clear much more quickly as well. So you can definitely clear your own stuff. Absolutely. But it seems like people in our generation are much more, there's a few more layers to peel back for people our age. And what do we do about, um, I mean, we can't have our children not watch television, but television growing up in our generation was tightly controlled. You know, there was no foul language. There was no sex. There were no toilets. There were no king size beds. Couples slept in twin beds, you know, on and on and on, right? Everything was completely filtered. And so right. if, you, if you were watching TV in a general sense, uh, nothing was going to happen. But today, uh, anything is on TV. And a five year old with a remote control. Uh, could definitely dial into a channel when nobody is looking and see something that would uh, uh, completely change them for the rest of their lives, right? So what do we do about that? And is that part you know, of the you know, trauma? You know what, Jimmy? That's, I swear we did not talk about this before the show. I mean, I'm just telling the audience. That really strikes a chord with me because I had this, this young man come and he had been – at the age of five, he had been exposed by some older children to pornography. Right. And it, when I got, and he was a macho guy. He was a tough, tough guy, you know. And when I got him regressed to that five-year-old, right. he, uh, I hope he's not listening. I, I don't think so. This was a long time ago. He balled up into the fetal position and just cried. It, it is so traumatic to expose your children to something that they're not ready for, it is severely damaging. And the problems that it caused him were just heartbreaking. And so you be a better parent. You don't just be lazy. And I know that sounds harsh, and I know a lot of parents are dual working, you know, to keep the household together. You don't give your kid the remote unsupervised. It's simple. It's a little harsh. But it's simple. You just, you don't do it. Could you imagine at the, uh, you know, if some five-year-old uh, managed to stumble on, like, House of a Thousand Corpses, right? <laughs> it just And had those images burned into their retinas, right? That I, I just, I, I, I can't imagine that. And we, as children, I mean, you never, unless... You had some crazy parent or friend that would drag you to a drive-in at the age of five to see something. Uh, chances are you never were ever exposed to any of that. And uh, I, I just could not imagine. You know, there, and there's so much of, uh, and not that there's anything wrong with it. I love a good horror movie uh, just like the next person. But today they are so effective in their horror that if a five-year-old right. or a four-year-old or a three-year-old would look up and see something like that on the screen, uh, I don't know how 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 they could be. I mean, I just I couldn't imagine because first off, they're going to think it's real, 
That's the first thing. And the second thing, it's the graphic side of it that, that comes into play and, and, and what that, how that, and we have a whole, we have probably 50 million children in the United States right now that in the last 10, 20 years could have been exposed to anything on cable television. Absolutely. In fact, I sent my son over on a play date and, um, he watched house the, of a thousand corpses. No, he got exposed to that, that five nights of Freddy. Oh, you know what that is? Yeah. It's, it's like some video game and it traumatized him right. and, and it was horrible. And you know, the mom, I should have known like the mom is really nice and she's a great parent, but she was, having all these pregnancy complications and she was like nine months pregnant. So of course I'm sure she just wanted the kids to get out of her hair. I'm not blaming her, but it traumatized him and it only takes one time. It only takes one time. And the amount of inner child work that I do or the soul retrieval work that I do, regressing people back to when they're five, six, right. seven years old is, is about, 85% of my work. I think we're all walking around with like a missing child piece. And and when we come back, we're going to talk about The Walking Dead. We're going to talk about The Walking <laughs> Dead. There's something going on there too as well. And by the way, everybody, it's 63 Cubs uh going into uh it looks like it's the bottom of the 8th and this is fade to black. World Series game 7 Wednesday with Holly Cook. I'll be right back. We listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk. Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRARadio.com ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carzonel, tiburón. Y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Work with your doctor when taking medications. Make Protovite part of your healthy lifestyle. Healthforliberty.com is your source for Protovite, a powerful nutritional supplement that's a true breakthrough for your health. Poor digestion makes it nearly impossible to absorb the nutrition your body needs. Protovite is a liquid multi-nutrient formula with patent-pending absorption technology and the highest quality ingredients to nourish every cell in your body. My name is Sandra White. Six weeks ago when I started taking Protovite, I was on 14 medications from everything for blood pressure to fibromyalgia. In the first 10 days, my blood sugar dropped 50 points and my fibromyalgia pain is gone. And so was 12 of the 14 medications that I was taking. I'm 66, living life and loving it. Go to healthforliberty.com right now. That's healthforliberty.com. Thank you, Protovite, for giving my life back. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is revolution. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back, Fade to Black. Holly Cook is with us tonight. Yes, it is World Series Game 7. We get that. Cubs, Indians, bottom of the eighth. <laughs> bottom of the eighth. Cubs are Cubs are up 6-3. Uh, Holly, do you have a dog in this race? Oh, no, I didn't even know it was the World Series. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 
that's that's how you that's how you keep order out of chaos right there and that's a that's a that's a good call but for our for our fans out there for the fader knots it's uh six three and uh to be to be straight with everybody uh it's the bottom of the eighth man we are one inning away i just wow wow could this actually be the night okay they, they, we're talking about uh, uh, chaos and and getting your life back in order. That's what we're talking about tonight with Holly. Holly's the best uh, with this. And, and also, Holly, when I'm around you, and you're probably going to laugh, but when Rita and I hang out with you, um, you have this you have this thing that goes on with you. Um, uh, you're funny, right? You're smart. You're all of that, but you have a way of 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 calming people down. And I, I don't even know if you recognize it, but, but you have that ability and you straighten people out. And uh, I want to thank you for that. So that being said, talking about, uh, you know, what happened with your son, right? Five nights of Freddy, which is insane. Um, uh, but as an adult, I played um, uh, uh, Silent Hill. Now I played all of the, with Rita and that game as an adult in my forties was completely traumatized. Uh, I had nightmares. I, I, it was just a, you know, now I can't imagine as an adult, it, I know it's a video game. I know. Right. But it affected me emotionally, affected Rita and we could not stop playing. Right. Could not do it. Good. Right. Wanted to go back and get more scared. You know, that music started and man, that little radio in the background, that's, oh man, here it comes, right? I, I could not imagine if I was five, six, seven, eight years old playing that game and getting sucked into the mental aspect of what is actually going down here. That's, that's, that's trauma. I mean, that's real life trauma. And now it is one of the more scarier games. I, I don't know. There may be stuff uh, even more crazier than that that's out now. But Silent Hill messed with my head. And if if I'm a kid, I'm traumatized for life. There's just no question about it. And then today we have the number one, the you know, the number one show on television is, uh, oh, we've been watching Black Mirror, by the way. Have you checked that out? No, the only thing that I've checked out is Stranger Things, because oh, you mentioned it, and I right. was hooked. Yeah, Stranger Things, amazing. Now, Black Mirror, um, I'm going to throw this over to Twitter as I say Black Mirror, and uh, let's see who's been watching that. All right, now, Black Mirror, I'm going to let that go for now because I want to talk about The Walking Dead and, and what's going on in the world today. But Black Mirror is everything that we talk about on Fade to Black. And it's in, and I'm talking about technology and choices and and the life around us and how we're monitored or uh, if every aspect of uh, Fade to Black is in Black Mirror. So go and check it out. The seasons are only three episodes each. The newest one, season three, is 12 episodes. And uh, it's it's incredible. So Black Mirror is is the show. All right. Now, Holly, what are you doing tweeting, Holly? I'm watching you. I'm, 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 you, I'm, you, I'm a Gemini. You, uh, <laughs> you can, I'm sitting here talking to you and your tweets are blasting by. Check this out. <laughs> well played. Well played. Um, uh, so Black Mirror, everybody check out Black Mirror. It is uh, an incredible series and the, the writing in it and the concept behind it. I've never seen anything like this on television before. We're also watching The Man in the High Castle, too, as well, oddly enough. I uh, started that last week. Now, um, The Walking Dead, this is what is crazy. Season 7 has started, and uh, there's some other aspects of this I want to talk to you about. But Season 7 just started, and the first episode was last week. And uh, apparently... Uh, millions of people are completely traumatized about what happened mm -hmm. in this episode. Um, did you see it? First off, have you seen it? You can. Oh God, never. Uh, oh, no. Okay, good, good. No, uh, um, I have not. Okay, I'll let the audience know now. Uh, TWD, The Walking Dead, 
is has not been part of our life. I remember when season one started and Rita and I went and started to watch the first episode of season one. And this is Rita. It's zombies. They walk slow. What is scary about that? <laughs> Don't be stupid, church. Don't do it. And, you know, and she just like snapped me, to, you know, just snapped me back to reality. <laughs> She's like, so, so anyway, so we never did The Walking Dead. But I have here uh, 34 tweets, uh, uh, responses to this first episode of The Walking Dead. And um, obviously, I want everybody to stop listening to me if you have not seen it and you're following the show. But uh, that being said, um, uh, they are saying it's, uh, one of the most traumatic and violent pieces of TV ever. Okay. Ever traumatic. I have those, sorry, I, I have that same thing pulled up on my computer. Okay. So you're looking at these tweets. Now I'm not going to use the bad language part uh, in these tweets, but, uh, here are some of them. No, I can't even deal with The Walking Dead. Never cried this much in my life. Right? That's a tweet. Mm -hmm. um, the Walking Dead, you cannot do this to me. Right? Here's another one. Even after one day, The Walking Dead has me feeling down. Right? When you mm -hmm. don't want to accept the events that took place in last night's episode of The Walking Dead, and then there's a... There's a there's a gift that is in place, you know, people crying uh, when no one is obsessed with The Walking Dead like you. And all of you want to do is talk about last night's episode. Right. And it's another crying gift. Um, I'm going to go down. Um, F The Walking Dead. F The Walking Dead. F The Walking Dead. F The Walking Dead, brah. F The Walking mm. Dead. I'm crying. F the walking dead. I'm going to make some cereal. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Legit feel sick watching the walking dead. I feel sick after that part of the walking dead. I feel physically sick watching. This is one tweet after another, right? I just yeah. watched the walking dead scene. Everybody was talking about straight up. I feel physically ill. Wow. You know, and it's uh, it's just at this point, even the Game of Thrones writers are like, dude, this is a bit much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, and look at the one under it. Screw you, Walking Dead writers. I will never recover from this. Right. Screw the writers of The Walking Dead right below that one. I, I, I don't know how you found the fame, same article, but you're obviously uh, with me on this. Uh, Rick crying like this. I can't anymore. Wow. I don't think Rick has ever been this broken. Don't do this, Rick. He doesn't deserve this now. And, and they go on and I, uh, there's more here. I'll, I'll, I'll read more, but this, this is the part of the media, um, that, uh, this affects people, right? This, this really, really has gotten to people on an emotional level. I haven't seen the scene. I did go out um, in the last 24 hours, and I tried to find it specifically. And this is what I found interesting, was that and not only could I not find the specific scene, and I'm kind of glad that I didn't because I don't want to get physically ill, I don't want to be bummed out, but I don't know the whole storyline either. But obviously something went down. And as I started to investigate this a little bit further, this is what I found, Holly, is that I uh, the forums and the comments and the, the articles that were written about this were talking about two or three different scenes in the first episode. So it's not like there was one traumatic thing that, that everybody's been taken down by. There's a few different things that went down in this first episode. And I found that interesting. And and its cumulative effect on on the fans of this show, it's millions, and mm -hmm. and now they are in turn zombified, right? Now they're tra right. now they're traumatized. Now they've got to do the drive to work the next day. They've got to sleep through this, 
and and it's uh, it's burned into their brain, obviously, right? For somebody to turn around and react and do something on Twitter like this, you know, to be so motivated to go out and express their feelings like this, something went down. Is there? Are, 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 what do you think is the effect on on everybody? Well, <laughs> they made the choice to turn on the TV, mm. right? They made, and you know what? I know it's, it's, I'm, I'm not super nice when it comes to stuff like this because of what I think is happening is that, well, is what I know is happening is that people stayed hooked like you were hooked to Silent Hill because it's releasing morphine within the body. So it's making you high, but you're getting high on such a negative Thing, but it's also creating loosh. You know, Corey Good, David Wilcock, we all talk about loosh and creating loosh for the dark uh, na- negative agendas, the dark ET forces. We're creating energy food for them. And so that's what I talked about in the beginning. It comes down to choice. Don't get high off violence. Because not only did it make you physically ill, it completely rippled out into that whole grid, it hurt your heart. It probably, on a cellular level, created harm in your heart. It created cellular damage in your body. It affected every single chakra. Like, no, I don't really feel bad for people that are traumatized because nobody had a gun to their head making them turn on the TV. 17 million people watched that. Six to six, Cubs, Indians. I'm just announcing to everybody. It's six to six. <laughs> well, there that goes. Just like I said, here we go. Uh, hundreds, a uh, hundred million Americans are going to be traumatized here in a few minutes. Um, yes, and 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 with that, um, I'll say this. I keep going back to Rob Zombie because he's so effective at the visuals. But I went uh, to a Rob Zombie concert as a guest, and uh, I go, and um, he had uh, a couple of things that he did visually. One, he had these robots come out on stage, and they were like uh, 30 feet tall, and they were crazy, crazy looking. This was not like funny ha-ha stuff, just crazy bad dream things, and they were really well done. So these robots come out on stage, and uh, and it, I, I just never forgot that. And then he makes this announcement about his new movie, House of a Thousand Corpses, now rated X, and he's trying to get an R rating. He's trying to get it released. But tonight, I'm going to show you clips from the movie, right? And there was all these rumors going around Hollywood about this this flick and how scary it was. And, you know, you tag something rated X, right? Ooh, man, this is, you know, this is over the top, over the edge. So he plays these clips, and these clips are going on in the background on these jumbotrons, uh, with these robots on the stage, and this, you know, and it messed with me. It messed with me a lot, and it was a rock concert, right? It's a stupid rock concert, and uh, this this thing as an adult, as you witness this, but now you've got to look around in the audience, and you're looking at eighteen year old kids that are seeing mm-hmm. this and they're seeing it in it with a different set of eyes than, than mine. It's the norm, right? The shock value to them is now at a different level than it is with me. Right. Because, exactly. you know, and, and it's the norm. You, they, everything's got to go a step further and a step further and scarier and bloodier and more dramatic and more traumatic. And it's kind of like where we are today. It's, I don't know how we got here. It's like um, everything that was written about in the 30s and 40s and and be aware and, and it's, it's coming. And we kind of laughed about it. But here we are in, in 2016 and it's all out there for our kids to see. Right. And 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 it still has to do, too, with that, that high that you get from the morphine. I mean, I get the same adrenaline rush off of what everybody got from The Walking Dead or these crazy video games or whatever they're doing. I don't know. 
And I, I get that from snowboarding or indoor rock climbing. It's the same rush, but you're not doing it in a negative way. You're not doing it to harm yourself or desensitize yourself. You're doing it to be challenged and exhilarated. And I can tell you that everybody, because I had some scary moments watching the Stranger Things, like I'm, I'm a baby when it comes to stuff like that, because I don't subject myself to fear. But I can tell you the same adrenaline rush that people get from being addicted to horror movies is like have the tip of your snowboard over a cornice that you can't see over the other side. It's, it's the same, same adrenaline rush, but one is not harmful. You're not bombarding your body with the visual of humans or monsters maiming other humans, which is your brothers and your sisters. Right. It's feeding into that loosh or it's feeding into a positive vibration. Now, the the audience for The Walking Dead. Now, again, I haven't seen the show. Right. And and I don't think that I will. And I'm not going to go and binge on seven seasons of The Walking Dead to get caught up. That would take me two months. So that that's yeah, not going to happen. But what I have gathered um, is that. We're talking about zombies, right? They move slow. They're easy to outrun, and and it's an easy movie to make. It's an easy television series to make. Let's go make a zombie movie. Throw some blood, you know, some crazy makeup on, and let's outrun zombies. And zombies are okay to kill, right? It's okay if you shoot a zombie in the head because they're dead anyway. And so that's the other part of making a zombie movie. You can... You can have, uh, you know, a thousand people die or a thousand zombies die. And nobody's going to, you know, give you uh, an X rating for that. So we get all of that. And th- I think that the from what I can gather is that the audience naturally, uh, you look at a zombie thing like this and you can add a certain amount of drama to it. But we all know it's zombies, right? So there's a humor factor in it. There's a funny ha-ha part in that we all know that zombies walk slow and there's no way they're ever going to catch you. Right? You just walk a little faster. You don't even have to run. Right? That's it. That's how you defeat a zombie, right? You just walk fast. Right. right? And so, um, so, you know, that's the funny ha-ha part. So, okay, so let's mix the drama and a little terror into this and it's a zombie thing and whatever. And the audience had been acclimated to that. And now, suddenly, it's not that. And there's now they've been bombarded with when they were expecting one thing and they've gotten another, but they're hooked on the series and they're emotionally connected with these characters. And then this sudden trauma plays out on the screen. And now you've got, what did you say, 17 million, right? Is that, yeah, is that 17 the number? million. 17 million traumatized people in the country. And you are able to do that uh, um, with with anything that is successful on television. Um, you can change somebody's emotions immediately, immediately. The mass media does it every single day. But I think that element in The Walking Dead is another way that when we wonder why there's chaos in our world and chaos in our lives, well, take a look at that. And they don't even realize it. Right. The the viewers, they don't realize right. why they are completely out of whack and out of alignment that just maybe it was episode one of season seven of The Walking Dead, but they would never know it. But, but that's the problem. Why aren't why don't we know that? Like I go round and around and around with people all the time and they're like, oh, it's the cabal. It's the mind control. It's this. It's that. And it's like, well, no. You have a choice. Why can't we just make the right choice? It, it's that whole cymatics thing when it, start, it when it turns into itself, when it goes within, and then it comes out into this beautiful pattern, this sacred geometry. Why do we keep going back to the chaos? Yeah, Sherry just tweeted. Did you see this? She goes, Jimmy, wrong. Rule number one in zombie land cardio <laughs> well played sherry and just let everybody know i do pay attention to twitter 
but that that's uh, funny that's funny um and and then there's this i want you to listen to this check this out um uh and rita did this research and and i'm going to do some paraphrasing here but this is bleeping nuts all right if you sleep six hours a night for 12 days, and that's about how much many Americans sleep all year round, right? About six hours a night. Your cognitive and physical performance becomes virtually indis indistinguishable from that of someone who has been awake for 24 hours straight. The same effect is produced by six days of four-hour nights. And the performance of someone who has been awake for 24 hours straight is, sil is similar to that of someone with a blood alcohol level of 0.1%. In other words, normal amounts of sleep deprivation have us acting like we're drunk. Now, think about society today, Holly, with our sleep habits and the way that the man has got us all twisted up. Stay up late at night, watch The Walking Dead, lack of sleep, get up early in the morning, go to work, zombified. And, 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 it's, and when you're in this state of mind, you're uh, blind to the world around you and to that chaos and while you are creating chaos in your own life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, can, can I just sort of share another analogy yes you may it's your show i'm just here to hold your hand Holly. <laughs> so let's take the pipeline for instance the north dakota pipeline yes everybody's in an uproar here's here's this is a very chaotic thing going right now everybody is up in arms about this even myself i'm so deeply triggered that i might even go out there after uh, november 12th and just kind of go out there and check out what's going on. But for those of us who are still using plastic grocery bags opposed to canvas, we're using 1,200 bags per person a year, 380 billion plastic bags just in the U.S. a year with 12 million barrels of oil being used. So 86% of all of our sea turtles are affected and 1 million birds die a year because, oh, we forgot to, to grab a canvas bag because it wasn't convenient. Right. So it, it comes down to this basic of a thing. So I haven't used, not to like toot my own horn, but I haven't used plastic bags for 18 years. I did the math according to the statistics I looked up. I have saved or not used 21,600 bags just because I could remember to do a canvas bag. So it, when I say it starts at home, it starts at home. Yes, we use gas and oil for electricity to drive. I mean, we do use petroleum products, but if we could cut out and come into balance, we wouldn't have all this chaos at the pipeline. It's not the oil company, it's our consumption. And you know what? Twinkies. Twinkies. Ew. Twinkies, the creamy filling is petroleum <laughs> byproducts. So, if we all stopped They're eating, yeah, if we all stopped eating Twinkies, I'm just playing around. Come on, Holly. I'm just playing around here. So Holly's like, oh, my God, really? Oh, oh no. See, and and I, um, uh, I, this is my, uh, this is my excuse for that. Um, I use paper bags, right? And I have a garage full of the canvas bags that I have collected and I don't go and reuse them. I'm guilty of that. A lot of us are. Uh, I'm not, I, I hey, get that. And um, 14, 14 we, million trees right. are cut down a year for your paper bag. Yeah, but at least they break down in the soil, right? At least they do that. Come on, Holly, give me a break, man. Don't don't bust my chops. Nope. 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 <laughs> and... You gotta do the canvas. You know what? I have a great solution 
for all the fader knots. I already have it all planned out. What's that? Fader bags. Fader bags. Like you would remember your fader bag. Oh man. Uh, have you talked to Rita about this? No. Nice ones. I already have them visualized. Right. And they're perfect. And, and I already picture like Gabe and Sherry and Kat Fleming like scrolling down the supermarket with their, their fader <laughs> bags. Like I already totally have it visualized. It's going to happen. Fader bags. Uh-huh. Wow. Wow. You've just, uh, you've stumped me. That's good. I'm very, very rarely <laughs> speechless. And and I don't see Rita responding to this because she's going, oh, why didn't I think of that first? Why didn't I think of that first? Rita, what do you think about the fader bags idea? We'll get her to 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 jump in here in a second. She's probably working but wait, out. The, the, the fader bags are special because we can't use too many disposable coffee cups either. So then... You're going to have the fade to black um, travel coffee mug that slips conveniently into the pocket where you can drink your your River Moon fade coffee. to black blend. Wow. Well, you shop. Wow. Rita, right? Rita, are, she's in there designing right now. <laughs> she's in there designing. That's yeah, That's really good. Okay, hold on. Uh, need to take a break right here, Holly. Let's do that right now. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Holly Cook. We're talking about chaos in your life, how we turn it back into harmony, straighten things back out. And I guess we start with no Silent Hill and no The Walking Dead. But Black Mirror's okay. I'll be right back. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Metal God, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. KGRA Radio. Intelligent Talk. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. If your home has hard water, then it's likely that LimeScale is clogging your pipes, damaging your appliances, costing you hundreds of dollars each year. You can eliminate LimeScale in the entire house with HydroCare products available at Wave Home Solutions. Easy and efficient with no maintenance, no salts, no chemicals, and no coils. And you can buy with confidence from Wave Home Solutions. Performance guaranteed. Just go to bestwater411.com. That's bestwater411.com. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. secret i love ponies i really love ponies i'm serious i couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush why fade to black because you never got that pony damn it this is fade to black with jimmy church on the game changer radio network and kgra the global radio alliance
Welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. On the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet, you can follow me right now at J Church Radio. You can follow Holly, Holly M. Cook. You're, um, uh, you, have a, you have a really cool, cool tag in Twitter. What is it? Uh, Holly, Holly Magic? Oh, Holly Pacha Magic. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and and so I jump into the uh, into Rita's studio right during the break, and I go in there. I go, man, what a great show, man! Holly's the best. She goes, look, Church, we have Holly Cook on the show, and you want to come back after the break and announce the score of the World Series as Holly Cook? How can you? Do-? I was like, hey, baby, whoa, 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 whoa. It seriously kicked me in the butt, kicked me physically, kicked me, and said, "Go do the show. No more, no more scores." It's uh, still tied six to six, uh, top of the ninth, uh, Cubs Indians. So this this whole, <laughs> but that's what America is built on, like hot dogs and baseball. See, there's nothing wrong with it, Rita. She gets it. There is. It's awful. You're eating <laughs> lip and ass ground up in a in a lamb intestine, watching dudes sat around a ball. There is something wrong with that. It's awful. Yeah, let's offend 350 million Americans, Holly. You know, and, oh. and, uh, but but you, you know, this is <laughs> this is my is, opinion. I, but but listen, check this out. The Romans. If you think about this, right? The Romans, when they built the Colosseum, opium for the masses, right? Let's get them off of the hard things that are out there right now, the chaos of the Roman Empire, and and you know the, the how bad their lives are, and let's just build a Colosseum for this deflection of reality, and that mentality rolls into today. So what do we have? We have a Coliseum in every city in America, right? We have where the gladiators go and fight. And as long as we build that, right, then the, then you have order in your cities. You have opium for the masses. We played a video game. Uh, uh, it was called Rome, actually. And, uh, in that video game, so you're building these cities and you're going through and you, and every time you built a coliseum, the chaos in the city, you know, you had more bliss and people were happier or more productive. But if they didn't have their coliseum, you know, they were unhappy. You know, you're happy meter in the game. And now I realize it's a video game, but but it's also a recognized thing. You know, it's it's really, really funny. So what do we do? We build these coliseums across the country where our teams go and play the other cities and it's opium for the masses. And let's serve them some duck lips, right, with ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> Give them some beer in a plastic cup and they're happy. You know, it's it's really, really, really funny, and uh, and that's a really, really good point. Um, so uh, back to back to all of this 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 sleep deprivation thing, um, I find so so fascinating because the um, I'm going to continue with this, and then uh, let's talk about it. In the short term, these types of deficits have a significant effect on our performance across the board, and that is. The perception uh, deteriorates along with your motor skills. In one study of college basketball players, well-rested players perform better than those who followed their usual schedules. Uh, That makes sense, right? But your emotional control suffers. The connection between uh, your prefrontal cortex, which is where we make all of those executive decisions, um, uh, and other parts of your brain, the connection the associations with fear and other emotions, all of that degrades, and we become more impulsive and prone to depression, right? And all of this stems out of the cumulative effect of lack of sleep. And it could only be an hour a night, right? Two hours, oh, I can can survive on six hours. You know, I go to bed at midnight and I get up at six, I'll be just fine. 
and you continually do this and everything starts to fall apart. Car accidents, um, analytic uh, reasoning, uh, you know, the ability to make sound decisions and also quite simply to recognize what is else is going on in the world around you, your family, uh, politics, all of that starts to become clouded. And now we have a nation of zombies. Right. And on a lot of pharmaceuticals. Well, that comes into play too. 100%. Absolutely. absolutely. And well, and back up a minute. What about this whole walking dead coming out right before the election? Talk about frying people's nerves. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> uh, it's possible. It's possible. I don't know how you weave The Walking Dead into politics, but it was well played, Holly. Well played. And and now, but uh, all of this, everything that is going on right now, uh, when you look at uh, the work schedules that we have, at least in Europe, right, you get six weeks off a year, you know, things like that. Here in the United States, if you took a six-week vacation, you'd come back and somebody else would have your job, right? So we we don't take vacations. We don't do it. Absolutely. No, no. We want more overtime. We want more work. We want less sleep. We want more, more, more. Um, and a lot of it is driven out of fear. But the, this cumulative effect is crazy, you know, and I fight for my sleep. I really do. I fight for it. And, and I try to take my nap every single day. I know it sounds crazy, everybody, but I, I really do because I find that uh, I don't think right if I don't have the right amount of sleep. And I look at studies like this and it just confirms my physical well-being, what I've, I've always fought for. Sleep is precious. You know, it's not a waste of time. Sleep is not a waste of time, you know, and here I am broadcasting from seven to 10, you know, every single night and our audience is here sleep deprived the next day because they've listened to fade to black and we're turning them into fade to black zombies. Pretty effective marketing, I think. Right. Uh, you know, but the the whole lack of sleep, it it's like. In that sleep state is when your body physically heals and renews itself. That is when it's physically restoring itself. The liver detoxes. Your whole body begins to de-stress in the sleep. And it, you're right. It's taking it away from us. We cannot be working these. People come home just fried. I mean, I can't believe where I used to live in California the, the commute, and some people weren't getting home to their families till 7 or 7.30 at night, and it's this worker force thing to just completely enslave us, emotionally break us down. I mean, it's slavery. People like you and I and River Moon Coffee, we're lucky enough to be doing what we love to do, and so many people are just stuck in this, they're trapped. I mean, there's no way out of it. And yeah, it breaks them down. I see children suffering. I see moms trying to pick up all the slack because the dad's working, you know, 11, 12 hour shifts sometimes by the time you factor and commute. I mean, it, it's kind of sad. We're, we're kind of, we're kind of in a mess. And you brought up the pharmaceutical aspect of it. And in the 50s and 60s, I remember, um, and certainly you can go and, and find enough documentation and, 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 and old uh, film and video of this, but, you know, your, your stay-at-home moms, your, your dads that were working, right? So they would, uh, you know, wake up in the morning, mom is popping a pill, and, and, and she's happy, and she's doing her housework, and she's taking the kids to school and, and doing all of her stuff all day long and just work, work. And then, you know, husband comes home at 5 o'clock, and they sit down and have martinis to, to bring themselves down from the pill popping of the day and then take a, a sleeping pill for a night, a sleeping pill, and then wake up in the morning, pop your upper, you know, and do your thing. And it was... It was like promoted, right? It was like, 
this right. is this is okay and and I can't even think about how many moms and housewives across this country were on that regiment and dads that were on that regiment going to work in the morning popping something coming home at night martini as soon as they walk in the I can't <laughs> I can't imagine doing that, you know, and or do you remember um, uh, this is this is crazy, but this was a way of life. They would have some TV series and they would show dad's office. Right. Pick the TV series. Pick it. I don't care which one. Just as long as it was in black and white, somewhere in color. But you went to dad's office and he had a bar in his office. Right. A bar. In his office. Somebody come in, fix you a drink? Yeah, what do you want? Oh, scotch. Uh, scotch on the rocks. <laughs> right? 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and it was, it was like, okay, you know, to drink at work. That was, that was the mentality. Right. But, but, you know, th that whole thing, it's still the same. There's still, if it's not the mom popping the upper in the downer at night, like it was in the 50s, it, it's still happening. I have had so many, uh, and I hate to say this, I have seen so many families fall apart because the mother has been completely strung out on Wellbutrin, and this has been, this has been a handful of families. It is, it is a huge problem not talked about. And um, it's leading to divorce. I know of one case where um, someone worked at a school. They were on their way to school. They were on so much Wellbutrin and painkillers that they crashed into a mailbox and got arrested by the time they got to school. So they were literally driving to a school completely whacked out on pharmaceuticals. I mean, I love what John Rappaport has to say. Like, I live for Thursday nights, and I'm like, shh. Like, be quiet, everybody. I'm trying to listen, right? And I get so mad if I miss John Rappaport because he's so spot on. We have a huge pharmaceutical problem, and now they're drugging children, uh, fetuses, excuse me. If you're a young mother and your baby's kicking in the womb, they're now giving it Adderall through the mother. It's not called Adderall. They have a new name for it. But they are now drugging the fetus. There is a huge, huge pharmaceutical problem going on. And, and a big part of that is, is what I do in my work is I help people find that emotional issue, that emotional point of trauma to release that energy that's causing the pain or the depression or whatever it is, because it all stems down to an emotion. Um, and it all stems down to that chaos that you're sourcing from because you don't have peace. And I used to be one of those people. I, was, I, was, I grew up incredibly sick. I've been on Prozac, I've been on Wellbutrin, I've been on Trazodone. None of it helped. No, nothing worked. I've I, been to tradi I have been to traditional counseling. None of it worked. I used to go to the doctor all the time. They wanted to do neck surgery. They wanted to take out my tonsils. Thank God I, I was like too afraid to do it at the time. I didn't have the knowledge that I do now, but I am all natural now. No pharmaceuticals, nothing, and I've never been happier. I'm looking. I've you know I've heard of Wellbutrin, but you never looked into it. I I you know I've never seen it or know anything about it. You know I've never taken it, but it. I'm just reading here, and it's blowing my mind. It is the most uh, prescribed <laughs> medication. Uh, it's one of the most frequently prescribed antidepressants in the United States. It's also used for weight loss and, and to help you quit smoking. Right. And yeah. it is, it, is it also like, is it like a speed too as well? I mean, why would they use it for obesity and, um, and anti-smoking? That's, that's, that's interesting. And, and it's, it's an antidepressant too as well. I, I'm not sure of, of the chemical makeup, but it's supposed to break habits. Interesting. Like with the, the obesity and the smoking, it's supposed to break habits. Ah. But, but getting, getting back to the chaos. Okay, so say, say Susie was abused as a child, right? 
So now she has this point of trauma, and, you know, now Susie's an adult, and she's on antidepressants. So I kind of have this theory that if you're still dealing with this trauma, but now you're taking an antidepressant that's mostly fluoride, so you're calcifying your pineal gland, are you still not experiencing that trauma on an etheric level, creating loose for these negative ET agendas? Right. I mean, th- this is crazy, and people have got to start being responsible for their actions. And I know it sounds harsh, and, and you know, I'm kind of hard about this, but it, it's, again, it's not the cabal, it's not mind control, it's not anything, it's us. And it's us choosing to either wake up and get out of the, that, that victim mode and be responsible responsible for our actions or we we sit on the we sit on the merry ground you know sucking our thumb like babies being the victim and it's like once we start making one tiny little change that vibrational occurrence it starts building even with the whole plastic bag thing like you're literally making a contract energetically to bring this toxin into your house right this toxic plastic oil thing and you're also making an energetic contract that it's okay to harm the sea turtles right or it's okay to put in the pipeline and it's like we we just i i hate to sound so harsh but we we once we start vibrating on this place of coherence when we're in alignment not nothing is a chore It's all out of service to others instead of service to self. And it's like your physical pain goes away, your depression goes away, your enemies go away. It's it's crazy. It's weird. You literally reshape the matrix. And by by taking that first step, right, whatever it is, maybe it's plastic bags. Right. You know, maybe it's that extra hour of sleep a night. Maybe it's, uh, you know, th- this baby. But once you start that, then you start the 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 chain of changing the world and you and you feel it in yourself because you've made this that's, contract. That's all it is. So so let's start with sleep because I'm probably beating the plastic bag thing to death no you're Ooh, not you're not we- but i use plastic bags to pick up my dog poop so now what do I do? <laughs> so you can actually go to babies rs and get biodegradable plastic bags i have an answer for every plastic bag question okay all right <laughs> you know what i'm gonna send you some <laughs> I know. I'm now i'm serious i'm gonna send you some. you know what I, you, i'm absolutely gonna do that you know what rita and i uh uh used to and i don't know where we got off of this but we used to uh buy the biodegradable you know doggy poop bags you know the little green and we had the, we, we had boxes of them and i don't know where that stopped i'm gonna blame rita because she was the one that used to bring those home. So I'm going to blame Reed on that. But we did. Uh, Holly, we did for years. And, and I know where I know where it kind of stopped. You, have, you know what? I know where, where did it, it stop? Where? Um, we ran out. And I was at Lowe's, right, shopping. And I went up. And I'm at the Lowe's self-checkout line. And I grabbed, like, 50 of the Lowe's uh, plastic bags. And I stuffed them in my bag. And I stole them. And then I felt guilty <laughs> and I turned to the girl standing there and I go, I just stole 50 bags. She goes, okay. And she let me go. So, so there, you, but, but I didn't steal them steal. I admitted to stealing them, everybody. Okay. I turn around and I turn to, you know, and I said, I'm stealing your plastic bags because I have dog poop all over my backyard and, uh, and I got to go clean it up today. But um, and that's kind of where it started. So you know what? I've got to get grounded again and send Rita out to uh, get the biodegradable, uh, the little green plastic uh, yes. doggy poop bags. They're not plastic. They're corn, I think. Yeah. Do Sky says. Jim- I don't know what they're. 
Dude's guy says, Jimmy, use all the paper bags from all the vodka bottles. <laughs> <that you buy. laughs> uh, yeah, there's a few of those around the house. Um, but-, but, but that's the thing. You you make a little change, if, especially if, if I may. You, you make a little change, even if it's on an emotional level. Um, can I? Well, you were going to say something, but I want to share an exercise that I do. Many nights. Please do. Okay, so we're all subject to bad days. Like, we're going to get pissed off during the day. Something bad bad is going to happen. You know, I just, um, I've had a couple little weird things happen the past couple weeks. So when I'm at bed at night, instead of festering, because we're automatically going to fester on the person that pissed us off, is what I do instead is, I have a girlfriend back in California and her husband has cancer and I'll picture my girlfriend and I will just send her gratitude or, you know, nurse Nancy's been really cool to me and Rita and I'll just like hone on to one of them at night, whoever it is. And I'll just send them gratitude. Like, wow, you know, they texted me today and they really made me feel better about this or we just shared a laugh or they're so kind. They did this for that person. And I'll just, send this gratitude out. And, and it, it sounds so simple, but it breaks that pattern of perpetual negativity. It, it's very, very simple. Somebody just tweeted, fade to brown, doggy poop bags. <laughs> there you go. Fade to brown. There you go. Man, where did all this marketing start? You know, it... <laughs> I don't want to uh, 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 take people down the wrong road with the way that we look at this program. We are not out there to do a bunch of marketing. But when it makes <laughs> sense, look, fade to black coffee, right? That makes sense. That right. every fade or not, every, fa- every, well, every person, but certainly I can say this with confidence, 100%. 100 out of 100 fade or nots polled today said they love and they strive for the perfect cup of coffee. 100%. I can guarantee what? nobody likes a bad cup of coffee, right? So fade Where to, was this poll at? Uh, I, I just did it right now. I, oh. I, I just did it. I, I, I made it up, Holly. I made it up. But, but, but fade to black coffee makes sense. Fade to black bags for the supermarket makes sense. Makes sense. Right? That makes sense. I, I'm with you. And then the fade to black coffee mug holder for the fade to black coffee in the travel mug so you're not, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, paper cups, right, that you buy from Costco, the uh, coffee cups, which which I get. Uh, um, it, right, uh, right, right. Well, you know, so it makes sense. It makes perfect sense. That stuff makes sense. I don't know about the doggy poop bags, but uh, we'll think about that one. Um, and the uh, I wanted to go back and touch upon something. The, uh, the cycle that we have gotten into with pharmaceuticals, certainly, you know, the mama's mommy's little helper, right? The, the uppers during the day and sleeping sure. pills at night um, turned into and morphed into a lot of different things. But today... It is certainly there. And that has t- turned into and morphed into, especially the last 20 years, into um, taking pills for medications for symptoms. You're not curing anything, right? You're just f- addressing the symptom of something. And then right. that creates another symptom. So you're going to take a pill for that. And it, 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 I equate it to like you take a pill for high blood pressure, right? And then you take a pill for low blood pressure because your high blood pressure pill is too effective. And so you need another. And then, and then you take another one for the headaches that you get from that. And then, and then your this diabetes is setting in because your high blood pressure and your thing and your sugar. And, and then, so you're going to take something. And then you take it. And the next thing you know, You've got 20 pills that you've lined up for the day. And it's only treating symptoms that started from the first pill that you started taking 10 or 15 years ago. And and that right. 
that is the mentality that we are in today. The pharmaceutical industry, and you're right, John Rappaport addresses this. But all of all of this cannot not affect our brains and affect our emotions and affect our alignment and and cause chaos and pull us away from harmony. And I'm not wrong about this, Holly. I am not wrong. No. You're absolutely right on. And I mean, okay, for me, I eat meat. I don't eat it all the time, but I eat meat. I drink. I party. Not all the time, but I do it. I saw some pictures on Twitter already. Um, I do do it, right? And it's in moderation. But people have gone so far. They've swung the pendulum so far the other way that if, if your baby's kicking in your womb and a doctor's telling you, that they're going to medicate the baby. It's, 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 it, it, what, what happened to our instinct? What happened to our intuition or just our common sense? And it is, we can take care of the pain because the pain usually like 95% of the time it manifests from an emotion. The emotion manifests into a physical symptom you can take care of that pain through that point of trauma. I had a woman, I was so excited. I had this woman come to me and I was going to make her migraines go away through this Bowen therapy. I, I already knew what I had to do and I was like, done deal, right? So I gave her a consultation and she couldn't come in for three weeks because that's when school started. And we traced, she had migraines and fibromyalgia. And I'm like, piece of cake, right? So we traced her migraines, and this was Bowen therapy. It wasn't the shamanic, it's soft tissue therapy. We traced the migraines back to an abusive, uh, an abusive relationship in high school. This was just in the consultation. And I said, you know what? I said, go home, write a letter, get it out, burn the letter, just have a little ritual and come back. And then we traced the fibromyalgia to three months after her son got diagnosed with high-functioning autism. She comes back to my office super excited. She was on medication. Uh, she would have these migraine hangovers the next day. The medication wasn't really working. She came back super excited. She's like, oh, I took your advice and I burned the letter and my headaches are gone. She's like, no medication. My headaches are gone. And so then since we found the point of trauma for the fibromyalgia, I only saw her maybe like for two or three sessions and her fibromyalgia was gone. How crazy it, is not, that? It is crazy because it, it's not whatever the, it, it's tied to an emotion. I oh, can see that. 95% of the time. Let's, uh, let's get this uh, break in that we blew past, but I wanted you to finish that thought. It was just too important. Our guest tonight Holly M. Cook. Oh, man. When I come back, oh, I've got a couple of comments, and then we're going to continue this. But we're in a rain delay in the World Series. Bottom of the ninth, top of the tenth, Cubs six, Indians six. Holly M. Cook is in the batter's box, and I'll be right back. Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. Hello, I'm Katini, and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here, repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black, on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. 
Firm.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained AngioPrim consultant. Call AngioPrim toll free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. AngioPrim.com. That's AngioPrim.com. Find out how AngioPrim can work for you. Get the facts about AngioPrim at AngioPrim.com. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. <laughs> we are of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full-range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this. It's amazing. It's just $129, and use the promo code JCRTWS, and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back, Lee Tappy. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. Welcome back, Fade to Black. Holly Cook, what a conversation tonight. And you know what? So, Holly, check this out. I, you know, I do what I do in every break. I run into Rita's studio and I love you, honey, isn't it? And and Rita just said, this is the best show ever. That's from Rita from the other room. How cool is that? Holly, did we lose Holly? We couldn't have lost Holly. Oh, she's in the bathroom. Holly, pick up the phone. Holly. Oh, no. This is not happening. This is not happening. Holly Cook is gone. Okay, let me do this. I'm going to do this in real time. Watch this. (laughs) Uh, Fade to black. We are in a rain delay, everybody, with... uh, with Are me? Yes, what happened? I don't know. Everything's plugged in. I'm right here. I don't know. Okay, no big deal. You're back. So, uh, what I was saying was I, I went down the hall uh, into Rita's studio during the break like I do oh. in every break, and she's like, this is the best I show ever. Ever. <sighs> now, um, I wanted this is, this is something else I wanted to, to mention to you. I want your comments on this. About a year ago, when we uh, brought in... Uh, uh, get the tea, right? Life change tea. Um, before that, and Rita will tell you, I used to wake up every single day and I would pop with my morning coffee for Advil. That was my <clears throat> breakfast for Advil and a cup of coffee. And my headache would go away eventually. And I would, wouldn't be a cranky butt anymore. And then You know, after about a a half hour, 45 minutes to an hour, Advil's kicked in and I started to align and I could like get to the next stage of the day since, since jumping on the supplements and the supplements that I've been taking, um, I have, I, I just don't do that anymore. I don't even think about it. I, I don't wake up with headaches in the morning. I don't wake up feeling strange. I don't. And I know, you know, that uh, it has to be from that change because up until that point in my life, and Rita will tell you, man, probably 10 straight years, 
you know, buying these jumbo bottles of of Advil and going through them could not be healthy. But I had headaches every single day. And um and not migraines. I don't even know what they were caused from. But um and I, I was I was pounding Advil, pounding it. And I just don't do it anymore. So when Rita sees me taking Advil now, you know, something's wrong. Like I broke my arm, right? <laughs> because, you know, I mean, she'll look at me now. When I when she sees me taking Advil today, she's like concerned. And she'll turn to me and say, what's wrong? What's wrong? There's something wrong. Um, because I just don't do it anymore. I've, I've seen this dramatic change in my... Uh, in my overall health from the top of my head to the tips of my toes. And it's because of, of, of supplements, you know, because I do all of the destructive things. I eat too much. You know, I don't drink during the week and everybody thinks I'm this big drink. I don't drink. And a lot of weekends I don't, you know, drink at all. So I'll drink maybe two days out of a month Two. that's it. That's it. But when I do, I don't play around, you know, that's for sure. But I don't drink through, I, you know, I don't drink through the week. Uh, I eat incorrectly. I don't exercise or I don't exercise enough, certainly. Um, and there's no treadmills uh, at, <laughs> at the house. <laughs> um, but um, do you think that that has a large part of, of the way that I feel today is that there are no pharmaceuticals in my life? Absolutely. So you were probably just having something simple like tension headaches from tight neck muscles and the Advil was not really putting you in alignment. You just thought it did. It was just taking away the inflammation. To change the tea or the supplement, it's a vibration. It's actually changing your cellular structure to vibrate at a different frequency. And we have the colostrum. I got it for Phoenix, and I've had it. It's delicious. I'm probably going to get more of it. But your food is that vibration that's changing your whole frequency. And since you're talking about that, when we eat GMOs, it actually tears micro holes in your intestines. Mm. So when you eat genetically modified food, it tears micro holes in your intestines intestines. And if you listen to Andrew Bartsitz, the galactic historian, or uh, David Wilcock and Corey Good talk about the government made entities that attach into your gut, I believe that it uh, I believe that it, the catalyst is through the GMO, which is tearing your intestines. So Andrew, the, Andrew the Bartsitz. government made entities attach into there. And we're just these loose victims. Andrew Bartsitz, the uh, galactic uh, uh, historian guy. Yeah, I don't follow him much. I've listened to him a couple times. Um, yeah, I haven't heard his name in a long, long time. I, I didn't know he was still out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I find him very interesting. Like I said, haven't, haven't, you know, listened to him for a while, but he talked about that. So I've heard cross references. I've heard a couple other people talk about it too. And I can tell you the autoimmune and leaky gut is so high right now. And what comes with that joint pain, inflammation, depression, anxiety, it's all linked together. Right. It's all vibrational. And you know what else? Uh, that, that is all uh, deep, right? That's deep. You know, that's, that's a lot of stuff that's tied there, but there, on the surface, there's one thing that the colostrum did for us. I can't believe we're doing this big plug right now for Get the Tea, but it's, <laughs> but it's true. The colostrum um, uh, forced us, not forced us, that's the wrong word, but it altered the amount that we were eating. We were craving less. Yes. And also there were certain things that uh, that we really enjoyed that uh, we stopped, like, craving. I'm not going to get into specifics here, but I, it, look, it, it could be uh, it could be tacos, it could be lasagna, it could be ice cream, whatever. It, yeah, I mean, there was just certain things that we were going out and, and doing all the time that we just, quite frankly, stopped talking about with each other. 
because it wasn't on our mind. You know, fi- I, and I found that strange. And Rita, Rita turned to me. This was, um, uh, she's going to probably uh, let me know in a second. Dude, quit talking about our personal stuff. But Rita turned to me uh, maybe six months ago. And she goes, do you notice that we're not eating blah, blah, blah? And I went, wow. Yeah, you're right. And I hadn't thought about it. And then she said, uh, uh, not at the same time, but in another conversation, she said, do you notice that we're not eating as much? Because trust me, uh, and you know, Holly, you know as m- more than just about anybody else how much we enjoy to cook and how much oh, we yeah. you know, love to cook good food and, and hang out with our friends and enjoy the celebration of a good meal and hanging out with friends. That's, that's, that's what life is all about. That's why we do this. So we're able to uh, hang out with friends and family. Um, but we just found that we were eating less and less and less because Rita and I enjoy food. We do. We should, we it's, should be big, but we're not. It's, it's energetic. So when you're vibrating at a lower level, like popping the Advil you're, you're and eating a lot of junk food. It's, it's a denser energy. And when you're vibrating higher, so when you're on the colostrum and your cells are like zipping around and they're happy, you're vibrating a higher frequency, you need less. You need less. Like I know for me, I, you know, I think sometimes people go, well, you know, she's just having fun all the time. But I spent the first 30 plus years of my life in deep, deep depression. And I have... I am so happy now. I'm just, I, life is awesome. And I feel like sometimes I have to eat more to bring myself down if I'm hanging around somebody who's depressed or whatever. So it, it's like an energy scale. Right, right, right. And, and but when I, I love to eat too, though. Like I, I probably do eat, Mark, Mark always bugs me. He's like, you eat more than I do. I do eat a lot, though. How much, how I'm, much, I'm always on the move. How much lasagna did you eat before the show tonight? He didn't even finish it. Uh, I had a cheese sandwich. Okay. Um, because <laughs> when you say that, uh, and you've, uh, we've talked about this a lot, that, you know, the first 30 years of your life and what that was like and how you've turned it around. Um, I, I think for a lot of people, it's, it's shocking. And, and I get that. Um, but uh, you know what? My phone system... Hold on for a second. I'm just going to see if this is working. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Yeah. You guys are talking about food and, and stuff. And uh, anyway, I was wondering about uh, what your all opinion is on milk. Ah. Uh, milk. All, all right. And thank you. I, I, I brought in the phone. Thank you, Bill. Um, uh, great question. And, uh, I brought that in, uh, because, uh, we reset up the phone system today and Holly knows about this. We brought in a second phone system and, and we were, we're doing things. So now we have two installed here. Um, and then I altered stuff, uh, in the middle of the show, but now, now my the, hand is raised. Yeah, now the old phone system is uh, the old version is now apparently working. <laughs> I was just like, "Wait, wait, it's working! It just lit up." <laughs> so I just did that just because uh, I just wanted to see if it was really working. Holly, um, I didn't mean to interrupt your thought, but what about milk? Milk is disgusting, and it's a dead product. It's It's dead. It's radiated. The milk off your local grocery store shelf is leaching the calcium out of your bones. It's killing you. It's pumping your body full of hormones and antibiotics. Don't drink it. The only milk I will drink is raw milk because it has the enzymes and the probiotics. And is what they do in milk is it's so it's so manipulated that they take out the enzymes. That's why you're lactose intolerant because there's no enzymes in it. It is disgusting. Really? But raw. Yeah. It, it, okay. Uh, you know Wisconsin? you're killing me. You know my favorite thing in the world is a bowl of Captain Crunch at 2 o'clock in the morning. Ew. Yeah. yeah. That's genetically modified corn. Right. And then you're putting like radiated 
milk on it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's not right. That's wrong. Right. Well, but I take I take the uh I take the life change tea products with that so it counterbalances, it counteracts. No. There you go. And <laughs> no, I mean I'm I'm sure you're fine because you have such a good positive outlook. But here's the thing. So I'm sure people are like, well, colostrum is is milk. Right. It's it's the pre milk, but um it it's uh it's different. It's full of enzymes and probiotics. It, the colostrum has not been manipulated yet. It has not been processed. So if you're going to get the life change tea colostrum, go for it. If you're going to grab milk off the shelf in a plastic jug, which is probably full of BPA, you better start digging your grave. That's disgusting. Rita just said uh, she's down 18 pounds. This is either the colostrum or the side effects of living with Jimmy Church. Yeah, there you go. That's my woman right there. Um, <laughs> um, the, the alternatives to milk, we all know about the sins, right? The sins of milk. Um, and I get that. But there's a reason why milk is in the back of every grocery store, because that's what everybody is there to buy. And they force you to walk through the grocery store, no matter which one it is. It could be Costco. They force you to walk to the back of the store because they know you're there to buy milk. And you're going to buy other stuff between getting the milk and then going back to the cash register. So milk is, I can't even imagine how many gallons of milk are sold per day in the United States. And that is the radiated version that you are referring to here. Right? How many Absolutely. trucks? How many trucks of milk go to a grocery store every single day? Mind-boggling, right? So right. we've got a big chunk of this country that it has issues because of milk, right? Mm -hmm. And it also causes inflammation. It causes inflammation, which will cause you to not sleep. Hmm. Hmm. What about a chocolate shake from uh, In N Out Burger? Go for it. Okay. All right. Let's. let's Why not? Yeah. See, it's it's moderation, though. It's it's moderation. Right. Um, That's all it is. Now, Holly, and this is what's most important for me. All of this conversation is great, and you've got a wealth of knowledge here, and you you're. Not only willing to share it with with this audience and the fate or nots, and you're very open to contact, and anybody can contact you, and and so forth. You're out there, but you also do retreats, you do a lot of conferences, you do one on one stuff, and you're sharing this knowledge with everybody that's out there. What are some of the projects that you've got going on right now? Oh man, I'm oh my goodness. I'm so glad that you asked. Thank you. And you know, thanks for having me back because you have so many spectacular speakers and I just I appreciate being here so much. So yes, I do do one-on-ones. I just added a new uh a new thing to my website, a new service because my my sessions were really big and heavy and long, so I lightened it up. So you can check out my website, but I I'm putting on my first conference and, um, yeah, it's a little bit more than I thought it was. I've, I've been through a venue change, so I stopped promoting, got a new venue. But I have Brad Olson coming, who's been so amazing and supportive. And I have Sharon Slosh coming, or Sharon Daphna, who that's her new last name. And she does all the Orgone energy. And she'll be coming up talking about the scalar energy, geoengineering, the EMS, the harmful effects of EMS. I have Brad Olson coming. He's going to do his modern esoterics and how everything is fake. And then I'll be speaking. And it's on November 12th, and I'm raffling off the Fade to Black coffee. Oh, shut up. And really? I'm going, you didn't know that? No. I heard Everybody I heard that, that. No, look I heard a rumor on the street that there was something going on with that but I didn't know that that's what was going on how cool is that Yeah I actually called River Moon because 
it didn't promote this event that well, and I rushed it. So if anybody's in the Portland area, contact me. Come listen to Sharon, Brad, and I speak. Um, I'm actually going to serve the coffee, and then I'm going to raffle off the Fade to Black blend and the Gaia blend. Oh, man. But anybody, anybody can join the raffle. Gabe um, joined, Barrett got some tickets, or um, Alice and Bell got some tickets. So I'm putting, Nurse Nancy got some tickets. So I'm doing this whole raffle that anybody can join. And honestly, I'm doing it to spread the coffee, which I was going to serve anyway. And I, I really kind of blew it on the, the marketing end of it. And I, I really want to compensate the speaker. So it's, it's called Unveiling the Matrix. And I'm going to put up Sharon and her partner, Gabe, and Brad, and I'm going to feed them and give them lots of yummy organic food. And they're pretty much speaking just out of a labor of love. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, anything extra that I can get after the venue expenses, I would love to um, give back to them. I, I, am, I am getting Brad's plane ticket, but any, I, I don't want them to walk away empty-handed. Uh, well, we'll help you with that. That part's easy. Um, but, uh, before I let you go and, and we will Holly, come on, your, your family. So that's easy. That part is easy, but, but th thank you for the, uh, fade to black and river moon stuff. That is really cool. And, and, uh, and we'll help you on the promotion of it and we'll start that now. But a couple of questions Tinette, and I know you're reading this right here in F2BQ. She says, ask Holly, how do I get rid of my butt head boss? Everyone else at work is great, but he is still there. What is, what, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. How does she get rid of her butthead boss? Or no, or how, does, or how does she change him? That's what you want to do. Yes. You want to subliminally manipulate the mind. Is that possible? Can you turn him into a from a butthead boss to a good head boss? You know, you know, it's 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 hard. I've done it with a couple people in my life, and there's been a couple other people that have just um, I've just kind of had to let go of. You can't really do that with a boss, but is what I would do is I would, and I'm not reading in the in the queue, so. Um, but is what I would do is I would see how your boss makes you feel. Really deep, and and when is the first time that you felt that way, and and it's probably not really your boss now but it's triggering something from the past so i would do you know i would track her back into the past to when she felt that way about someone else and i would do forgiveness work so if she wants to do that on her own she can also write a letter about how she really feels and burn it like the lady did with her headaches and, and she can forgive or she can go to work and just whew, transmute all that by giving love. I know, and right? It's, it's not easy. It's not easy. No, it's not. But you're exactly right. I am fully on that path is no, no matter what. And sometimes... In the beginning, it hurts to be nice to somebody that just, especially your boss, that, you know, you're driving to work thinking about this person, right? And that sucks. But if you're just overly nice back, right, then I've always felt that that worked for me, you know, and, and there's one other thing that I do, um, uh, and it's rare, but I like to screw with people. Right. My my closest friends dread me because I just mess with them. And those out there that are, that are, that are friends or around me. Right. And they stop getting messed with and they see me messing. They know that they're out of the car. Right. And, that's, right. you know, and and that's the, so. And my point to that is I pretty much tolerate even the negativity i'll i'll just go ahead and put up with it but if if that that mood crosses a line and it's only happened a few times in my life and rita will tell you there's a there's a couple of people in the last 20 years that that got thrown out of the car and and when that happens there's no fight there's no negativity 
There's nothing like that. There's no big blowout. What there is is no communication, right? That's it. Cut off. Yes. Done. Done. Because I don't have time for that. And I don't have time for the big blowout fight. I don't have time for the kiss and makeup. I, I just don't. I don't care about it. And and so if you're one of those that gets cut off, well, you know, you know, you know, when the phone calls stop or or you call me or call Rita and your phone is and, and it's only happened. I'm serious, Holly, a couple of times. But that's how sometimes you just have to deal with it instead of putting up with it and allowing that negativity from somebody else to slow you down, to change you. If you're thinking about it, then they are affecting you. Right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But you can't do that with your boss. No, you can't. You can't. That's and why so that's when you have to that's when you have to just when you give enough love, there's no resistance. They can't do anything. It's only when you fight back that they can get you. Usually, I'm sure someone's going to come back and go, that's not true, but usually because you're energetically just giving 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 and you're not giving uh something negative the negative for them to latch on to right 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 holly you want to stay on for a few more minutes after this break i would love to and i forgot to mention my retreat okay well stop and you can do that when you come back all okay. right just stay right there the one and only holly m cook she is back into the batter's box. Why? It's Cubs 8, Indian 6, top of the 10th inning. The rain delay is over. It's World Series Game 7 night with Holly M. Cook. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. We'll be right back. Listen to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Does your basement or crawl space have a damp, musty smell? Well, watch out. That's a sign of too much moisture and not enough ventilation. And that can mean increased mold growth and the buildup of harmful toxins and gases. Don't bother with a dehumidifier. It just circulates the same unhealthy air. Now there's a better way to remove these dangers and odors. It's with the computerized Wave Moisture Control Unit that reduces moisture and expels pollutants. We replaced our old dehumidifier with the Wave Unit, and in only three weeks, our basement is dry and the musty smell is gone. Wave units require no maintenance, no buckets of water or filters, and costs only pennies a day to run. Breathe better, live healthier with an affordable, no maintenance Wave unit. Call 888-618-WAVE 888-618-WAVE or visit MyDryHome.com MyDryHome.com Ride the wave Wave Home Solutions For a healthy, comfortable home What's up, Fade or Nots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full-range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this. It's amazing. It's just $129, and use the promo code JCRTWS, and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner, go Beckley Tepe. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com.
This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Welcome back. Fade to Black. World Series Game 7 night with Holly M. Cook. She's one of the best. You know, Holly, having conversations with you, um, you know, you're like a sister. Well, you are. And um, But the, the way that you've changed your life, you're so public about it. And for those that, that know you, um, that's one thing. But for those that have never met you and they hear your story and then they get to know you, they're like, holy crap, this is almost impossible. But if she can do it, I can do it too, right? Absolutely. Yes. And that's why I talk about it because if I can do it, you can do it no matter, no matter what it is. No matter what it is, you can shift through it. With, um, uh, I want to talk about your retreat in just a second, but um, we're on this point right now, and uh, theologians of or- Orion just tweeted, how mm-hmm. can how can you get rid of these dark forces from your life? And I know that's the theme of the night, but that, that's that's what's key here. How do you just get rid of those dark forces? So for me, I... I go to somebody for help. That's how I, I seek a, another healer. That's how I do it usually. I mean, there's stuff you can do do on your own, but I mean, I don't know if that's a question more for how like the sessions work or maybe I'm not sure, but for, for me, you know, you can literally extract the energy. But for me, I always go back to the regression part of it always go back to the regression part. And I still get my healings. I have this amazing, amazing woman staying with me right now. She just came down from East East Eddy Ranch and needed a place to stay. I just met her. She gave me a healing last night, and I've had a total energy shift from it. You know, so you, you never, I mean, you don't get healings all the time, but when you feel you're getting dense energy or you're still dealing with a trauma from the past, yes, seek somebody out and be in a group that is supportive. You know, like I have my friends and then I have like my tribe, you know, that I could really reach out to for support that get me and just be in that vibration because we're constantly changing and exchanging energy codes and transmissions. It's You can't help it. It's the cellular or it's the quantum it's the it's the quantum connection that we have that energetic connection that we have and we also when we're in 22 feet of somebody or closer our mag- the magnetic field of our heart is merging and communicating with theirs how do we eat captain crunch without milk though how 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 does that You're- happen I'm messing. Uh, I'm messing with you, Holly, so bad. <laughs> that, that's a question from Joe. No. Yeah, you know, I've never done. Uh, my daughters do it, and you know, the soy milk is is in the refrigerator. I I don't do it. I'm scared of. Don't it. do soy milk. Don't do soy milk. It's genetically modified. Oh well. <laughs> okay. So what do what do what what do I pour on my Captain Crunch that is still going to make the Captain Crunch taste good? Or coconut cinnamon toast. Oh. The, the vanilla flavored coconut milk. On oh cereal? Really? I'm going to send you that too. Yes, yes. I'm going to send you that in the dog bag, the diaper bag, whatever. <laughs> really? Well, uh, you know, uh, look, I, I love Captain Crunch and Peanut Butter Crunch and, and Cinnamon Toast Crunch, but I, I, I also like Special K with strawberries. You know, I, I still do that. And I love life and cinnamon life. Oh, man. So <laughs> with with all of, I mean can you really enjoy that with vanilla flavored coconut milk? Yeah, I, it's really really good. I mean I'm going to send you a box. Now what about what about uh coffee? Because you have to have cream in in coffee. Well I do. Rita drinks hers black, but 
Um, I don't do sugar. Well, of course she does. Yeah, right. <laughs> she does. Um, but uh, what what do I pour in coffee then? You can't pour coconut milk in coffee. That's not even legal in most states. It's not bad, but it doesn't. Okay, so all right. I do do half and half in my coffee. Oh, okay. So does it have to be organic <laughs> half and half? I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I do. I do organic. I do organic half and half. Yeah. Okay. All right. I've I've got to figure this out. The um. Uh, but wait, in Oregon, and I haven't. I have to get it. I have to find this in Oregon. When you go get your coffee, if you go to a coffee house, you have the option of hemp milk too. <laughs> say what? <laughs> did you yeah. say hemp milk? I did. Okay. Uh, yeah, that would be Oregon. You guys would have figured it's that Oregon. one out first. Yeah, you guys would have <laughs> figured that one out first. That's interesting. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 the retreat. Uh, tell us about the retreat. This is really cool. Okay. So it's with Lori McDonald and Laura Eisenhower and myself. And we did a retreat last July outside of Yosemite. It was very small. We, we could only accommodate. I think nine women. It was very small. We're only going to take nine women again. And we're going to do it in Kona, Hawaii. And we're already filling up. It's in March. It's March. I don't even know. You can find it on my website. I think it's March 28th to it's five days or February 28th going into the beginning of March. Yeah, I'm looking and at it here. This, February oh, good, 20th. you're looking at it. Good, you say it. Yeah, February 28th through March 5th. Yes, so it's going to be the three of us again. We're going to keep it small. We're only going to take nine or ten women. We have this phenomenal house right on the ocean, and we are just going to sit in ceremony, I'm going to bring in my uh, soul retrieval that I do for the community or, you know, I do the group soul retrievals. I'm going to teach sand paintings, which are far more phenomenal than they sound. And I have some other goodies planned. Or Lori McDonald's going to bring her wisdom and magic. And then, you know, Laura just was on the show a couple days ago. She's going to bring all of her stuff. And is what I liked so much about the last retreat is how the three of us work together. And is what we created was, I think the biggest, most important aspect of what we created was a safe place for women to really go deep and really feel held enough to release this trauma. What about so, uh, in the, now? You have all the other aspects that go into this. Uh, the food uh, is part of the experience, and 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 what's going on on that end? Because everything is oh, at yeah. the house. So, so Lori's daughter Amanda Lee is this event coordinator, and she's just spectacular. So we're gonna house the women. So we're all gonna stay in the same house. And we're going to feed everybody organic, non-GMO food. And then we're going to have workshops all day long. Because it's five days, we're probably going to incorporate some free time. But the cost is going to include everything. And if any of the women want to go, if I think we just passed the $1,495 tier. I think it just went up to 1900 but if you get a hold of Amanda Lee and you still want to go, just say I said you guys could have – give her the fate or not special, and you guys can get in for the last rate, so fourteen ninety five. There you go. And, uh, you, know, you know, it's events like this. See, men don't have retreats, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and we're all a little bit jealous about this you know there's going to be no guys there that's it right but uh right. On, on the flip side that's part of what uh that that makes women so special because you guys are smarter than us you guys have figured this out you guys have figured out a way to to take yourselves to the next level and men fight this men completely i don't need that 
right? <laughs> right. And, you know, I don't need that. But you guys have it all figured out. Now, when you uh, – and I, I'm not saying that, and I'm not trying to talk down to us men. It's just the way that it is. I'm not here to plant a flag or invent something or be creative. It's the way that it is. But when you are done with a retreat like this, how do you feel? And the, and the participants and the people that hang out, it's pretty much life-changing. Well, it's funny. We have three women from the first retreat coming to the second retreat. Oh, there you go. I think that says a lot. And uh, uh, you're going to do guided meditations, right? Yes, we're going to do, so it's what we did at the last retreat, and we're still trying to get together with with all the material, and we don't want to do too much repetition, but we went over in the last one all the goddesses, and then Lori did, it was really cool how it ended ended up working. Lori did a series of guided meditations, and it just ironically fell that the day I did the soul retrieval for the Divine Feminine, she had done a chakra clearing, Earlier that day, a chakra clearing meditation. So when the soul, so when I did the soul retrieval aspect for for all of the divine, it went really smooth, really quickly. And then Laura d- gives her information about the divine feminine and the archons. And you know, if you've listened to Laura, she she gets really um, very esoteric and out there. So, but we love it, you know. And but I think. I'm not sure that she did sort of hint around that she may be doing some tarot teaching at this next retreat. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we got a lot of cool stuff planned. Um, I'm doing a ceremony with the sand because the sands represent the time. So I'm going to do a ceremony about releasing the past, present, and the future. Because in shamanic work, you can time travel very easily and so I'm going to bring that in. And, and, and on that subject, I have to say, Jason Quit that you had on like a week or two ago was amazing. Amazing. Amazing was, conversation. I, I was so into that. And I couldn't catch the whole show because I was doing homework, but I caught him on Carrie Cassidy. And he was so right on with the shamanic work because he talked about just all the time traveling and how the shaman helped him work through a lot of it through the ceremony and it, it's amazing we're going to bring all that into the retreat that's what i'm talking about and holly seriously thank you for all that you do and uh your website is really quick we have the links up on jimmychurchradio.com but uh where can everybody get all the information for the retreat in hawaii so i'm just going to make it easy holly m oh. and you can get all the information for the the conference on the 12th to the unveiling the matrix. Thank you so much, Holly. Be safe and give my best to Mark. Okay. And, and now thank you. Thank you so much. I'll let you go and enjoy your lasagna. Holly. (laughs) Thank you, Holly. And, and have a great safe rest of your evening. Jenny, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. You're the best, Holly. Thank you so much. Holly M cook.com. Yeah, two events. She's got her conference, and she's got the retreat over in Hawaii. Everybody go check it out, hollymcook.com. This is Fade to Black. Going to take a quick break, give you an update on the game when I come back. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black, KGRARadio.com. ¿Qué tal, mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carzonel, tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo, Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Work with your doctor when taking medications. Make Protovite part of your healthy lifestyle. Healthforliberty.com is your source for Protovite, a powerful nutritional supplement that's a true breakthrough for your health. Poor digestion makes it nearly impossible to absorb the nutrition your body needs. Protovite is a liquid multi-nutrient formula with patent-pending absorption technology and the highest quality ingredients to nourish 
nourish every cell in your body. My name is Sandra White. Six weeks ago when I started taking Protovite, I was on 14 medications from everything for blood pressure to fibromyalgia. In the first 10 days, my blood sugar dropped 50 points and my fibromyalgia pain is gone. And so was 12 of the 14 medications that I was taking. I'm 66, living life and loving it. Go to healthforliberty.com right now. That's healthforliberty.com. Thank you, Protovite, for giving my life back. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. The Cubs win. The Cubs win. The Cubs won the World Series. And it was because of Holly M. Cook being on this show tonight. That's the good vibes Holly sent out to Chi-Town. Thank you, Holly. An amazing conversation tonight. Absolutely fantastic. Perfect evening. And uh, thank you for that. Just go to hollymcook.com. She does have two great events coming up. So she's got a conference, and uh, she's got this amazing retreat going on out in Hawaii that uh, Rita is going to be going to, by the way. And I can't wait for Rita to go because she's going to come back even extra uber cool. Yeah. You know, yeah, men men don't do retreats. Yep, Cubs win. I see it. I see it, everybody. Cubs have won. Holy crap. I'm looking at Karen just said, holy crap. Woohoo, right on Cubbies. Uh, you guys, that is history. That is truly history. I never thought, look, I grew up in Chicago. Everybody, I'll just say this. Uh, I'll get this out of the way because this is a pretty cool special night, especially after we just talked about Coliseums being built across the, the United States. But to that end, I grew up in Chicago and uh, Jack Brickhouse and uh, everything that was the Cubs and, and going to Wrigley Field at such a young age. I, I went there twice uh, with our Cub Scouts and uh, my mom scraped the, together the money to uh, let me go to uh, uh, Wrigley Field and go watch the Cubs play Ernie Banks, right? Rick Monday and all that stuff. Anyway, um uh, that's what I grew up with. And I also grew up because of that. You can't help but be a Cubs fan for life. And I wasn't ever a Chicago Bears fan, by the way, or a White Sox fan. But I was a Cubs fan, and I liked the name, the Chicago Cubs. So that stuck with me my entire life. And I never thought that uh, that I would see them win a World Series or even get back. But they did. And tonight, the Cubs have won and uh, put that curse to rest. I can't imagine what it's like right now in the city of Chicago um, and what's going across the United States. I'm looking at uh, uh, everybody's reactions here <laughs> in Twitter, and and I get that. So there you go. Congratulations, Chicago Cubs. You guys have uh uh, I, I mean, seriously, that curse is finally over, and there you go. So it doesn't ever matter now if they ever make it back. This this one was a big one, and uh, I'm sure that uh, social media and, and, and Chicago and everywhere is just lighting up right now. Congratulations, Chicago Club, uh, Chicago Cubs, and and winning in such a, in, in such a, an epic fashion. You know, extra innings, rain delay, uh, the Indians coming back to tie it up, and then uh, they got a run. You know, they you know got to eight to seven, 
So there you go. Great game seven. That's the way it should be. And uh, the Cubs win. Now, uh, with that, now I'm not taking any phone calls. Okay. So if you're calling in, uh, good luck with that. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to touch upon really quick. <laughs> Again, thanking Holly and talking about men and not going to retreats and uh, and so forth, right? Real men don't eat quiche. Well, check this out. For the first time in its history, Glamour Magazine has selected a man as one of the magazine's women of the year. That's right. And that man is Bono. You heard me right. The U2 frontman was named a Woman of the Year alongside actual women like Simone Biles and Gwen Stefani. <laughs> Is this thing on? Is this thing working? Bono, one of Glamour's Women of the Year. The U.S. and Russia may join forces in exploring the second planet from the sun. NASA and the Russian space agency Roscosmos are discussing a joint mission to Venus. NASA has already drawn up a number of scenarios for the joint mission, and the discussions on the possibility of cooperation with NASA on the Venus D project have been in place for nearly two years. Last November, the talks were resumed after having been suspended due to sanctions that were imposed against Russia over Ukraine. The sides still haven't yet uh, come to a final decision on the mission, but it looks like it is going to happen. And that is really cool news. Now, a couple of days ago, um, this breaking news in such dramatic fashion uh, was announced in Cairo that an ancient tableau depicting images of boats have been uncovered on a building dating back nearly 4,000 years. The carvings, which number more than 120, have been rediscovered on the walls of a structure in Abydos in southern Egypt. Upper Egypt, depends on how you look at your map. In Abydos. Now, We've been talking about Abydos. We did all all last week with R William Henry. Talked about Abydos uh, going back uh, to uh, our Egypt special uh, two weeks ago. Abydos is a very magical place. It is a huge place. But on this wall, carved onto white plaster walls, are these crazy, intricate, detailed images that extend for 82 feet. And you look at these boats, and they are ships with sails and masts and oars. They're amazing to look at. They are 4,000 years old. Now, it's the first time these have been seen since 1903. Don't ask me why they were discovered in 1903 and then forgotten. Okay, they haven't been seen in person for over 100 years. And there's 120 of these. And you look at them, and I'm telling you, you look at these, and they are so beautiful. But they show ships with sails and oars, and they're detailed. And the only thing that comes to mind is these things are built to go places. Yeah, up and down the Nile around the Mediterranean, out of the rocks of Gibraltar, and across the Atlantic, and maybe all the way around Cape Horn to friggin' Australia. I'm telling you, these are amazing. And these are ocean-faring, sea-going beasts. You need to check out these drawings. They're absolutely incredible. I think we have them over on our Facebook page. Um, but uh, the announcements uh, uh, came out two days ago. And you just wonder to yourself, what else is left to be discovered in Egypt? Because this is big news. Also, 
on the on the big news front on ancient stuff. Chilean researchers have appealed for help to stop the world's oldest mummies turning into black slime. Officials have turned to UNESCO to recognize the mummies believed to be at least 7,000 years old with a world heritage status. The Chilean mummies date back roughly 7,000 years, making them some 2,000 years older than the oldest Egyptian mummies. Well, allegedly. They are being attacked by a bacteria that is causing the mummified remains to appear to melt into black slime. However, even if UNESCO approves the application, it may be too late. Almost half of the 300 mummies are rapidly being consumed by that destructive bacteria. And with that, this is Fade to Black. I got to say very special thanks to the one and only Holly M. Cook for a very special night here on Fade to Black. And, of course, congratulations to the Chicago Cubs. Put the curse to bed. They won Game 7 in the World Series, which just makes this a pretty cool night on Fade to Black. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Kamarian. Show is produced by Hilton J. Paul, Mark D. Kovar, LJ3, Renee, Mark Dunbar, Jonas. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vito, and Mark D. Kovar. Fady by Dale. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy. Spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. Syndication is KGRA, The Planet. Thank you, Holly M. Cook. Just go to hollymcook.com. This broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2016 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. You can follow me on Twitter right now, at Radio. We'll see you tomorrow night for Fader Night and John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom. Until then, everybody be safe. Go Beckley Tepe.